హలో గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ డియర్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు టుడేస్ ది వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ టు సెషన్ వన్ ఆఫ్ డే టూ ఇన్ దిస్ కనెక్షన్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు వెల్కమ్ టుడేస్ ద రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్ ఆఫ్ సెషన్ వన్ మిస్టర్ ఎన్ పి బన్నీ బాయ్గి ఈజ్ ఎ ప్రౌడ్ అలూమినియం ఆఫ్ అవర్ ఎస్డిఎంసి ధార్వాడ్ and he is an assistant director uh, in national skill training institute ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship uh, government of india hyderabad so before uh, he is going to start his presentation now i request uh, priti madam to introduce mr np bandi bhai to our uh, participants madam very good morning all brief introduction of mr np bannibagi assistant director national skill and training institute ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship government of india hyderabad myself preeti working as a assistant professor in ece department sdm cet dharwad now i am going to give introduce introduction of eminent resource person mr np bannibagi sir who is going to throw light on the topic the government initiatives in skill development mr np bannibagi sir is currently working as assistant director national skill training institute ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship government of india hyderabad sir has rich professional experience of 26 years he has completed b in electronics and communication engineering from bc bagalkot affiliated to karnataka university darwad He has obtained his post post graduation in digital electronics from SGM CET Darwad affiliated to Vishweshwara Technology University Belgaum Sir has several publications to his credit in various reputed national and international journals to brief about his publications sir has six publications in reputed international journals one publication in reputed national journal three papers presented in international conference Mr NP Banibagi sir has rich professional experience of 26 years he worked as hardware engineer at Neltronics company private limited pune maharashtra he served as trainer at central institute of fisheries and nautical engineering training institute government of india ministry of agriculture visakhapatnam andhra pradesh he also rendered his service for 17 years at training training officer microcomputer advanced training institute dge and p government of india ministry of labor and employment chennai at present he is serving as assistant director national skill training institute for electronics and process Instru- instrumentation government of india ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship ramanath pura campus hyderabad sir has taken several responsibilities and implemented successfully to name of you a team member in establishment of pc based virtual instrumentation in the industrial automation laboratory setup in process control instrumentation section advanced training institute chennai a team member of best institute award in 2005 among the dge and t field institutes in india under the ministry of labor and employment also a team member and coordinator to frame the syllabus for industrial manufacturing systems course under the center of excellence coe sir has also guidance come technical support to implement the academic projects to to mtech b diploma and msc mphil electronics and mphil in the department of physics coordinator to conduct diploma iete and amit examinations coaching cum guidance classes at iit darwad sub center which is housed at sdm ct darwad so i am pleased to welcome you sir a hearty welcome you sir uh, yes sir uh, sir it is audible sir yes sir it is audible uh, good morning everybody sir thank you very much uh, sir can good i start good morning good morning sir Uh, sir can yes. i start now yes sir yes sir okay okay sir okay today's uh, my topic is uh, 
uh, skill development uh, initiatives by government of india or we can call it generally government it may be state government or central government or maybe autonomous bodies etc uh, it is my actually privilege and very happy to uh, give the information about uh, skill india or uh, skilling india or uh, sometimes everybody knows nowadays uh, it is started uh, separate uh, actually uh, department and separate uh, ministry uh, to compete with the uh, globally india uh, especially for other countries who are actually uh, very rich uh, rich in uh, skilling that is uh, what here the statements are there just i will uh, i think it is uh, visible i think everybody is having visible no yes sir presentation is visible sir ha ah, right right okay i'll yes, continue yes, yes, i think here uh, our uh, honorable prime minister in the year of 2014 they started uh, regarding uh, a uh, skill india slogan and he told uh, everybody uh, countrymen uh, people of uh, our uh, great india let's uh, pledge to make india the skill capital of the world okay this uh, slogan they started uh, in the year of 2014 but india started in the year of 2009 onwards about uh, skill development in india here uh, first of all i want to speak uh, about why skill is required because everybody earlier when we are uh, studying a school level or college level we used to uh, hear some slogans like that literacy in india because everybody should get education the percentage of education of the people should be increased uh, so many uh, schemes are used uh, means uh, implemented in india through state government uh, uh, uh means country uh, state wise in the country each and every state actually literacy uh, used to uh, every uh, year or so many schemes implemented and increase the uh, literacy means it's education even adult education even children's education free education or so many schemes in karnataka state also but now scenario is uh, changed uh, after 30 years uh, scenario changed uh, skill skilling india means each and every person required some specific skill to live their livelihood happily means earn earning getting a job the main objective is to get the job in uh, india or abroad can see here some of the objectives first one is our honorable prime minister made national skill skill development mission under this uh, here there uh, in the year of uh, 2016 they started a new uh, ministry ministry of skill development and uh, entrepreneurship under uh, this uh, government of india we used to call uh, specifically msd earlier earlier actually so many training institutes and skill development uh, schemes are uh, implemented they made all in a one under one umbrella with help of uh, this uh, ministry a special ministry they called uh, msd here you can see the skill india is an initiative of uh, government of india it was launched by prime minister narendra modi on 15 july 2015 with an aim to train over 40 crore people in india you can see at the time of uh, in the year of 2015 what is our population was there approximately 100 crores plus in that itself they aimed to train over 40 crore people in india in different skills by this year current year that is 2022 the initiatives include 
national skill development mission national policy for skill development and entrepreneurship 2015 and pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana pm kvy scheme and the skill loan scheme see these are the at, in the year of 2015 itself they started now after 7 8 years we can see today where we are okay so many actually ministers uh, actually worked with this and achieved so many actually milestones see here uh, how the policy actually intervention skilling india's skilling ecosystem india's first national policy for skill development and entrepreneurship was on 15 launched to rejuvenate india's skill ecosystem okay this is a brief about i'm telling how it is started in india and then here one more is operational operationalize one more uh, uh, component of this operationalization of national skill qualification framework this nsqf is global especially european countries and uh, us uk australia especially european countries involved france and uh, germany uk uh, they made uh, some world bank project under this uh, to bring india's all uh, formal and informal uh, technical educations under global standardization that is what here we used to call national skill qualification framework means we generally we know actually we'll start from lkg even pre kg lkg ukg first standard 10th standard and uh, plus 1 plus 2 puc 1 2 and then we are going for a degree diploma and engineering master degree and phd university all this uh, they made into standardization national skill qualification framework because global glo globally recognition is required for our skills uh, okay, that is what here level 1 to level uh, means level 10 <laughs> they made nsq of level 1 nsq of level 2 3 is like that they made maximum the levels are there in globally le uh, nsq of level 1 to level 10 okay this is only brief i am giving and then we will we'll go for what are the departments or uh, government of india or state governments are involved in uh, skill development okay, here aim also they made in the year of uh, 14 15 15 16 17 every year they made here uh, total skill training across central ministries see all over india under the under the ministry of uh, skill development they brought one umbrella under uh, one umbrella so, uh, i think most of the, even uh, railways uh, even uh, private uh, companies like uh, tata tata group all these people are giving a training okay all that is uh, they actually made a survey they want to achieve almost uh, in the year of 2015 and 16 itself they started 104 lakhs means almost it is 1.04 crore here skilling with quality you can see here uh, common norms uh, or schemes uh, or initiatives or programs uh, from the central uh, ministries or departments and then curriculum and uh, curriculum and content is very important for that you can see here around 251 job roles means job roles means even actually we are studying uh, electronics electronics and uh, communication engineering branch it may be diploma or it may be degree but there what they are going to do job role example hardware engineer or maybe software engineer or or maybe supervisor or maybe design engineer or different different uh, roles are there but here uh, they made 251 job roles and the content for 100 courses finalized how it will be who will uh, actually start this is that is based on industry industry validation of standards as per industry 
demand means industry what job role they want what is the qualification means what are the uh, skills or uh, syllabus is required for this both theory and practicals and here you can see the uh, 1500 plus 1500 plus courses aligned with the nsqf because i briefed about uh, this uh, nsqf this is a globally uh, education or uh, our skill uh, standards means qualifications national skill qualification framework this is we actually india became a international level certification and uh, for that i told here industry validation this uh, uh, course syllabus and content should be uh, that is industry demand because it, 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 there is a gap is there formal education or may, maybe informal education and demand in the industry because there every 10 years or 15 years or 20 years or 30 years uh, the industry changing the technology or uh, uh, especially you can call that is manufacturing uh, system or plants are changing with the along with the technology okay there actually the old courses are uh, changed the syllabus and made as per nsqf and here you can see industry connect 40 sector skill SSEs. we used to call 4040 sector skill councils we used to call SSEs in short form uh, they framed what is the SSE sector skill council so okay i'll explain in in this under this 40 sectors skills uh, 4,500 plus national occupation standards and uh, 1661, 1,661 qualification facts. See the uh, completely how much work uh, done uh, the government of uh, India programs and schemes connected to industry. What industry demands that courses only you have to run in the institutes. Then here you can see monitoring, monitoring and evaluation. Who are this? That is end-to-end -end solution for M and D. Same uh, Ministry of uh, that is uh, skill programs established through MIS. Okay, this is only that is uh, management uh, information system, the special uh, software and uh, NIC. I think uh, everybody knows about uh, NIC in India. That is uh, uh, National Informatics Center and which is maintained uh, data centers in India in uh, two places. One is uh, Noida, uh, Delhi uh, data center is there, other is in Hyderabad. In India, entire our government uh, uh, data centers with highly secured, uh, it is maintained by these two data centers. Okay, that's what here uh, they made a special uh, design. The NIC is designed for special software to monitor or uh, that is the portal to monitor. And then here is other number mandated to counter duplication of trainees because one uh, skill and many people uh, means one person, many skills at a time should not be applied. Okay, that is what here uh, used for our uh, that, uh, security or duplication to avoid this uh, duplication of trainees. And uh, next integration with the digital locker scheme to provide a training certificates in a single click cash rewards uh, to beneficiary under C uh, dbt okay these are the like monitoring and evaluation as you uh, the digi digital locker scheme means it is nothing but a qr code will be there for each and every trainees uh, uh, certification if you click and complete details will come Okay, that is what here, and there is no question of duplication or uh, printing certificate giving and uh, to avoid. This is what actually transparency is there. Next, uh, tran translation uh, standards here. Indian qualifications are being evaluated. This is actually very important. That's what actually I told you about what is uh, NSQF, international standard. And uh, our certificates, our skill qualifications, all actually valid uh, throughout the world. Here actually validated by many countries to provide mobility for skilled workforce and uh, 82 with uh, UK and 26 with Australia. You can see our skill qualifications, our certification, our training, skill training, around 82 skill qualifications are 
it is uh, validated by uk and there is 26 uh, with australia okay this is at the time of uh, in the year of 2015 16 only but now till today i'll give you all the details uh, then actually overseas uh, employment uh, for our indian uh, skilled uh, personals 50 centers being established in uh, catchment areas specifically for overseas employment and 11 being planned in the first phase you see actually it's not only training and uh, we leaving them we they maintained uh, i'll show you that our, our real data is is their uh, central government what are the things they're doing they're keeping a complete database that database actually shared to the abroad I mean, overseas uh, employment even the certificates and all after verification of employment it will come to us back means the government of india through embassy will receive all the certificates who are going abroad and actually verifying who issued this is this which university which institute and uh, uh, means who is uh, uh, the issuing uh, authority in india okay it will go to them and verify this all actually they made automated online okay that next you can see grading of itis and skilling centers in actually especially itis comes under vocational training but now it is a scenario it is changed now uh, shortly it, uh, the skill uh, each and every engineering college diploma college or any technical uh, universities should be uh, have one skill skilling centers means it is it's not iti it is itis are actually different okay that uh, scheme is different but your skilling centers are, uh, it is required to upgrade, uh, reskilling, and so many schemes are there. I'll just explain to you. Next, it is under comes under actual vocational training. Next, uh, ISO certification. Yeah, here you can see. So uh, even uh, standardization, international standards, we know only about ISO. Yes, in ISO, uh, ISO. 2990 certification of ITH for international quality standards, recognition of trainees and certification in IT international level. See, this is the one actual ISO for uh, skilling centers in India. It is uh, actually recognized by actually we used to call a training training centers or we used to call a train training providers, but international level as per ISO 2990, they are calling all. Uh, institutes are learning centers. The word they use it as per ISO 2990. In India, actually, so many state government ITIs and uh, uh, central government uh, training institutes, all are uh, specially skilling centers or uh, got ISO 2990 certification. Next, uh, curriculum and content, one, once again, this is a revamp up because uh, old uh, uh, courses and all, uh, because they're absolute and no demand, and then they can revamp uh, then uh, workplace skill because uh, industry internship. And also here you can see um, employment of industries for conducting three weeks in plan training for train, trainee instructors. Yes, here you can see that it is not a training. It, they are trainee instructors. Means we used to call uh, in uh, uh, Skill India the term they used to call that is master trainers. Uh, okay, for them it is a uh, we are giving on the job training. Here three it is actually internship type, but we are on the job training. OJT is called off the job training and on the job training. On the job training means. The master trainers or a trainee instructor should uh, go to the industry and work. And of the job uh, training is from industry people to upgrade or reskilling of that. They have to leave the industry, uh, means deputed to the uh, call institute level. Means they have to come and sit in the classroom or lab, they have to work. Okay, this is the difference between on the job training, off the job training. Okay. Uh, I think any question, it is audible, sir. Hello. 
Yes, sir. It's audible, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. And next, you can see some of the boards are there: National Board for Skill Assessment and Certification. And this, which is regarding this, uh, I want to tell regarding uh, means who are the people with this national body to certify skill across India. Okay. Next. Now I'll, I'll go straight straight way to back to the where in India it is started. Okay. See the main aim of this why it is Skill India started earlier also. If we are maintaining training institutes and giving a skill training only, practical training only. But why they actually made it is uh, the aim and mission of uh, our government of India in the national level. The main national skill development initiative will empower all individual through improved skills knowledge nationally and internationally. Uh, recognized qualifications to gain access to decent employment and ensure India's competitiveness in the global market. See, this is the mission, National Skill Development Initiative in India. I think uh, I'll share you. No, this one. Actually, here some more actually brief uh, information. I'll tell you why it is uh, India is uh, started about to train skilled uh, workers. See, skill. Sir, it is visible, sir. Yes, sir. It's oh. visible, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Clearly. Yeah. Sir, here I, I want to tell uh, the brief information about uh, India. India currently faces a severe shortage of well trained, skilled workers. Because it is actually uh, compared to other countries, uh, what it is there, 2.3% uh, of workforce in India. Uh, undergone formal skill training okay, as compared to other countries like UK, 68% of their uh, in population, and Germany is 75%, and uh, USA is 52%, and 80% 80 of Japan, and 96% South Korea. You can see here, uh, compared to this, and we have to compete, means we have to adopt uh, global standards, especially in training and especially in jobs. That is the reason they started in the year of 2009 and 10. Uh, the central government started uh, the schemes around approximately means uh, around. Uh, they started one uh, autonomous institute or society that is NSDC. I think everybody knows about NSDC, National Skill Development Corporation. Okay, NSDC is very very uh, means popular in India. Implementing this to establish that department in society, there's uh, around 1000 crores they spend, and uh, to implement this, all the schemes uh, 15,000 crores, 1500 crores. It's 15,000 crores. The mission already has shown you up to uh, 2015 to 2022. Uh, Means this. Uh, Current year. See, at the time they are uh, started, uh, India annually skilling capacity was estimated approximately 7 million during period of 13 14. Apart from meeting its own demand, because this skill force is required for whom? For us only, for our industries in India. But India has the potential to provide a skilled workforce to fill the expected shortfall in the aging developed world see we are aiming to provide skilled workforce to the entire world because that much of potential india is having the reason is here it is there only one line you can see india is one of the youngest nations in the world 
we, we we used to feel proud uh, we are very young our country is very young in what way uh, with the more than 50% of the total population uh, p- the 25 years of age is there uh, that is 54% and you can see 62% of uh, working people the age between uh, 15 to 59 years this is 62% So that is the reason uh, the people are uh, means we are feeling proud uh, to make our uh, uh, skilled workforce uh, and that uh, will even supply to the different countries who needs and uh, scale with them okay, that is the one uh, actually challenge here but even it is uh, we are trying our level best to achieve this every year sir uh, sir this is mission statement is uh, visible sir yes sir okay. it's visible sir okay uh, here i can read to rapidly scale up skill development efforts in india by creating an end to end outcome focused uh, it is a outcome focused this word is actually very important it, it is related to the uh, training skilled training outcome based uh implementation framework which aligns demands of the employers for a well trained skilled workforce with uh, aspiration of indian citizens for sustainable livelihoods you see actually aligns uh, that is demands industry demands what actually employers are seeking what type of job role is available Dem- highly highly demand is there okay example i can tell you uh means we are not aware about uh, skill but one of the skill is there in the defense uh, armor welder means we heard about only welder welding but here armor welder is there so many private like a tata and reliance and uh, rafel so many so many um, mncs are collaboration within india with the uh, drdo and bdl and ordnance factories especially for armor welder means battle tanks manufacturing Okay, sorry for disturbance. Okay, next. Uh, <clears throat> what are the people are involved? I just uh, tell you here. Here you can see, sir. I think this is a uh, visible, sir. the governing council the chairman of this our uh, skill national skill development mission is uh, prime minister means it is uh, implemented uh, through pmo office and steering committee is uh, our um, chairman uh, that is as a minister that is uh, ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and uh, okay mission mission uh, directorate or exit committees uh, secretary that is msd uh, with this here uh, mainly four uh, four departments are there in india they made one is nsda national skill development agency and there is national skill development corporation the nsdc i told another one is dgt okay that is what actually uh, dgt is purely central government okay that is a directorate general of training and uh, state uh, implementation in each and every state in india that is a uh, we used to call ssdm that is a state skill skill development missions each and every state is having a, this a special uh, 
special department uh, most of the case uh, around 33 uh, ss dm are there in india now it means all the states it is covered all all the indian territories also it is covered uh, that, that is one one is nsda nsdc and dgt and ss dm yes through this only uh, in india the skill skill development schemes programs uh, uh, means with help of world bank or with help of uh, ilo that is uh, international labor organization and uh, so many other countries uh, different different uh, organizations of the european union uh, they are actually uh, collaboration with the uh, state skill development missions state way or centrally through nsda or nsdc and dgt and here actually nsdc i want to tell you because these are the three uh, main central government organizations or implementing all the schemes in india and here actually nation, national level how it will be governed and what are the other uh, main uh, means ministries are involved in this in india you can see here constitution of a governing council as follows actually chair is uh, prime minister and uh, union ministers from minister of finance and minister of skill development minister of hrd and minister of rural development minister of labor and employment and msme i think uh, msme also it is industry but now it becomes separately msme and uh, ministry of agriculture and uh, ministry of uh, overseas affairs and minister of uh, information technology and under is a ministry of uh, urban uh, urban and uh, poor that poor poverty uh, elevation because this new ministry is actually started this soon along with the uh, earlier it was uh, urban no? but now they added one more part of that of po that is uh, poetry means elevation and next you can see deputy chairman for this is niti ayog the chairman i think we we know about this niti ayog uh i think no need to explain because central government everybody knows even five years plans or 10 years plans uh, schemes and all made by niti ayog only in india and next the principal secretary is to the prime minister is one of the governing council and the cabinet secretary and secretary msd as a member secretary and the three members from industry academy as a determined governing council because eminent uh, means industries uh, uh, means uh, ceo or high level uh, presidents are also is part of this and three state chief ministers as a determined by the governing council on actually rotation basis you see this is the council about actual uh, skill development and similarly because i told you how, how many actually, ministries are involved in this even minister of finance also is the main part to uh, allot the funds to all to to implement this state wise also okay these are the submission missions and submissions also there but uh, steering committee you can see again it will be ministry of msd and secretaries of ministry of finance and all this ministry of agriculture hrd overseas affairs and ministry of technology means it labor and employment and all and next i, I want to tell here members and executive committee also see so the joint secretaries level means is officer sorry uh, means uh, as the members means executive committee in members of this and different different ministries and again this all comes under these are the four uh, once again i'll tell you uh, with the ministry of skill development that is nsda nsdc dgt and uh, state skill skill development missions now actually real time I, i'll show you this all actually ppt is uh, made by our central government only it is available freely you can download from this uh, website our websites only it is there and here in actually in this case uh, uh, i am myself is belongs to dgt here because nsda is there nsdc is there these are uh, uh, these are autonomous societies under the pmo office straight way and there is dgt is there i am actually belongs to dgt 
we are implementing uh, with help of uh, state governments. Yes, now uh, I want to share this. You can see the real time. Now I can. Sir, Sidling, sir, you can help me. Uh, this, uh, I want to remove this. I have to share uh, another one. This is okay, no? Yes, sir, it is okay. Top presenting. Again, present now. Yeah, I think, sir. Uh, yes, sir, it is visible. Visible? visible, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, visible. Sir. I think it is there. Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship is there. I want to straightway come to this. Uh, here, actually, we are having a schemes and initiatives. You can see this is under Skill India. Uh, here, we are having short term training. Under is uh, we are having a long term training. Also, is there. This all comes under so many schemes are there. You can see first one because we know about PM KBY. So many versions are there. You can see now the year also. That is one Pradhana Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. And Pradhana Mantri Vikas Yojana at present is going on. That is version three. Details I will tell you. Under is Pradhana Mantri Kaushal Kendras, PMKK. And under one is it is autonomous and NGO and society. That is JSS. JSS means Jana Shikshana Samstan. And uh, another scheme is there, uh, capacity building scheme and Udan. Udan is uh, uh, specially for Jammu and Kas Kashmir uh, technical engineering youths. This is the one scheme is there. It is very old, but still it is running specially for that uh, state only. I'll just click open and show you. Yeah, Udan. See, this is... Uh, the Udan scheme, the a special industry initiative, SSI for the state of Jammu and Kashmir is funded by the Minister of Home Affairs. You can see Minister of Home Affairs and implemented by NSDC based on the recommendation of the Rangarajan Committee. I think you heard about this. The scheme has been a major initiative of the central government towards making the educated youth graduates post postgraduates and three-year diploma holders in engineering of Jammu and Kashmir employable. And uh, Rangarajan committee was formed in August 2010 and the report committee submitted in February 11, post which our Udan scheme was promptly launched in the financial year 2011-12. The aim of the Udan scheme, a capacity building of the youth in Jammu and Kashmir through skill development and exposing them to best of corporate in India. You see, what is the aim after taking the youth and means uh, registration through this scheme, Udan scheme, and bringing them to and uh, in um, corporate means uh, behind this uh, BHL is there. I think you heard about BHL, Bharat Heavy, Elect uh, Heavy Electricals Limited. They are spending uh, the money, uh, means they are training and the stipend, job opportunities, and all placement center after training they're giving. That's what the best corporate in India. Uh, I think that is a BHEL company is actually a Maharatna company in India. The, the initiative also aims to providing corporate sector in India access to the uh, rich talent pool in Jammu and Kashmir. This is one actual example I'm telling uh, about uh, Jammu and Kashmir, and so many are there. And here you can see here, around 44,369 candidates have joined training. Of these, uh, 38 candidates have complete 38,798 candidates have completed the training and offered job across different sector. 115 corporates have been part of this program. See examples are there here: uh, TCS, Apollo, 
मेड स्किल्स के पी एम जी एस बैंक फ्रंट लाइन बिजनेस सोल्यूशन टाटा मोटर्स फ्यूचर लर्निंग सी सो मेनी आर दे लिस्ट नो सो मेनी आर दे See, this is the one scheme the government under this Ministry of Skill Development, and here different uh, schemes you can see: school initiatives and uh, higher education. And uh, India International Skill Centers and uh, free departure orientation training (PDOT). This is for ex army, ex navy, and uh, uh, air force, Indian Air Force (IAF). when they are uh, service short uh, commission services uh, sss so uh, ending before 2 years they are putting into giving them to technical uh, training with a certification and they are uh, this is a special uh, scheme for uh, uh, such people defense people okay these are uh, next you can see long term training cts is there craftsman training scheme these are a backbone of our industry in india backbone of our industry not only in india abroad also the cts uh, it's a craftsman training scheme it is uh, the syllabus uh, you can see how many uh, this trainings are there job roles cts uh, that is iti level this is purely state government is actually implementing with this cts next uh, uh, craftsman instructor training scheme cits See, this is a. Uh, we are having a formal education like a schools, high schools, and colleges. We are having a, a D.Ed. and B.Ed. and a M.Ed. Teachers uh, courses are there. But in technical side also, uh, crops instructor training scheme. We are conducting one year course for teachers, I.T.I. teachers, or diploma uh, lab, diploma polytechnic or uh, engineering college. now they are plan to mandatory they want to make this qualification cits certificate is there then only they can recruitment in a state and central government okay that is what actually we are training master trainers also uh, actually that is we used to call this is tot that is training of trainers this is cits actually eligibility is uh, here iti uh, diploma and engineering degree also see engineering people also can study this and uh, they can become a, a training officer or it government iti principals also but this is what uh, actually i want to tell the teaching side and there is advanced vocational training scheme abts this is actually upgrading the skills like uh, one week or uh, two weeks or three months course we can under this we can specially uh, means designed industry demand okay this is the one next we are having a uh, women's training program for this vocational training program for women and uh, schemes for upgradation of iti's and the plexi mou you can see what is the plexi mou one scheme is there because uh, the i told you about the industry demand only we have to develop the syllabus and approve it and uh, conduct the training in industry only because no need to come industry people uh, to the training uh, institutes and attend the classes but here it is possible they can take admissions in um, uh, institutes they can straight away put into the industry after completion of that that industry syllabus is entirely different because what they want example is there i can tell you uh, maruti suzuki is there they want actually service technicians of this course uh, means a service technician I mean they will train them they will certify them okay that's what actually plexi mo schemes also it is there because uh, they are having everything example apprenticeship is there so okay, apprenticeship they are having a classroom training and workshop is there and uh, real time uh, production also is there production uh, plant is there Okay, in that actually they are three months training. After three months, they straight away they'll put the totally nine months on uh, means on the job training means uh, work only straight away they work. And such a scheme, those people are getting a stipend or salary also straight away. Okay, this is the one uh, scheme. Yes. what are the other uh, are there here uh, plexi mou i explain you one more is strive you can just see this is 
you can read the style skill strengthening for industrial value enhancements see under this strive project skill strengthening for industrial value enhancement project is a world bank assisted government of india project with the objective of improving relevance and efficiency of skill skills training provided through industry itis okay this is the one itis and apprenticeships okay and here uh, it, it is okay that scheme is there uh, with help of uh, international bank for uh, reconstruction and uh, development ir ibrd in the 2017 itself they started and it is up to uh, i think this year that november 2022 it will be there or sometimes uh, based on the uh, based on the implementation they may extend also i think you can see this is called a central sector schemes yes yes with a budget uh, outlay of inr means uh, 22000 crore covers the following four result areas see this is uh, three three years i uh, mean uh, uh, itis uh, because that's a component are there uh, that is four result areas ra ra1 ra2 ra3 ra4 okay there this 22000 crore are allotted to the industry associations industry clusters all uh, means uh, tie up with the itis because what is the objective that is objective is industry they can uh, develop their own job role means syllabus training they can take the candidates from the itis or maybe anybody open to all but uh, through actual through state government itis only it should be uh, uh, open people also it may be 10th or 12th or uh, degree people can go through this they can study three months course or uh, six months course after that the industry will uh, give stipend to them during the training after that placement also this is what this is strive project this is a uh, one of the this is recently it is started uh, but uh, they given more focus and uh, implementation because of uh, this covid 19 Uh, in the year of 2020 march april started uh, that time onwards um, everybody uh, entire uh, world or india also it is uh, lockdown but uh, our skill ministry is uh, wake up and start actually working on this and implemented because they are not allowed itis and iti uh, people or uh, any unemployed youth in a rural area they are bringing and giving training and stipend also but this is uh, it's not aware of anybody but you see where it is is available 31 states uh, union territories have signed agreement to implement strive project it is going on already now a total of 314 iti from 23 states have been selected to participate in the program 211 iti have signed performance based grant agreement because grant based on the performance it will continue scheme otherwise they will close uh, because it is totally outcome based until placement job and uh, their salary okay everything will be transparent here uh, 13 industry clusters you can see here 13 industry clusters from eight states have been selected in pilot phase promote the apprenticeship you see only 13 industry clus clusters in india but what is the amount is there uh how many states are involved eight states uh, what about other states because they are not showing the interest but the amount you can see here uh, 22000 crores uh, scheme is there this is us dollar 318 million see this much uh, only how many people are taking just uh, 13 industry clusters involved and uh, 211 itis see this much only but uh, when you compare a very big india and how many states how many industry clusters are there each and every state like those people has to come forward but you see only 13 industry clusters means even state wise one also you take it is very low very very low <clears throat> at, at least 31 states it should be minimum 31 even it's not there see the 
uh, means uh, the schemes also how it will reach to the people means it's not possible because people uh, people are not coming forward because the reason is they are not aware about all these things this is one of the uh, company okay 
means organization 25% actually central government will uh, give to them and other uh, we are having national entrepreneurship uh, awards schemes are there one more is there the recently started here sankalp and just i will click this yes this is a sankalp uh, scheme along with the uh, world bank uh, see about sankalp you can see what is the just a read sankalp only skill acquisition knowledge awareness for livelihood promotion it is a program and with the loan assistance from the world bank it aims to improve short term skill training qualitatively and quantitatively through strengthening institutes bring in better market connectivity and inclusion of marginalized sections of the society sankal was launched in 19th january 2018 and it has uh, tenure till march 2023 okay see this is the one one of the skill development uh, scheme it's called sankal it is uh, used to see these are the capacity building workshops for states and district wise and especially for uh, physically disabled people in mostly it will cover schemes almost all all the types of uh, people and uh, schemes okay this is the one now come back to uh yes madam this is visible yes sir ha ah, okay this is one uh, that is a skill development uh, uh, institute it is called uh, central staff training and research institute this is open for everybody uh, especially some schemes are there for iti's and diploma uh, means uh, full techniques and all but this is open for everybody we are doing a research on what is the demand courses are available here some of the schemes are there same thing we discussed already advanced diploma and ats means apprenticeship uh, schemes and uh, uh, that is instructor side or technical teachers uh, co courses are there because demand courses we are made here and uh, this iti are there and short term syllabus also is there and uh, syllabus for flexi like mou i think i explained about that An another one is there special scheme that is rpl is to call actually recognition prior learning what is this rpl scheme already working people are there uh, maybe they are having uh, put 10 years 20 years uh, 30 years of uh, experience in their institutes means training institutes uh, or labs uh, for them we are using this rpl because whatever their uh, skill they are having we are mapping to the particular engineering branch and asking them to attend the examination and uh, especially practical and uh, theory online examination and they will be uh, certified by skill india this is what actually rpl means they need not to leave the uh, means uh, apply one one year job means one year uh, duration from their job it is very difficult to sponsor them because already see most of the state government and central government uh, uh, training institutes are there even railways are indian railways also uh, because they are not able to means shortage of uh, staff and they are not able to sponsor them one year okay for for such people uh, this scheme is there that is rpl recognition prior learning now here i i want to how many uh, job roles are there in in skill development recognized by uh, our ministry that is skill development ministry along with the uh, ncvt i think you people heard about uh, ncvt now it's uh, changed after globally uh, standardization uh, ncvt means national council for vocational training earlier ncvt now they put here a national 
council for vocational education and training okay that is ncvt just I, I want to show here how many job roles are there how many trades are there you can see here they categorize it as engineering trade non engineering trade even the some of the skills are there that is trades usually impaired also okay see these are the syllabus but you can see total number of engineering trades are there under iti around 82 even example here is there wireman paving technician welder welder pipe welder see how many actually specializations are there in welder turner a navigator marine also and you can see here technician electronic system design and repair you can see along with each and every qualification uh here we mentioned uh, level 5 nsq of level 4 you can see uh, 5 this also 5 this is 4 this is what actually uh, 2013 onwards uh, the internationally recognized because uh, we changed the standardization from indian national to international okay these are 82 are there engineering trades you can see here non engineering trades are there example ag uh, agro processing bamboo works cosmetology catering and computer aided embroidery computer hardware computer operator even dairying also data entry operator means computerized and general courses are there even digital photographer even driver cum mechanic dress making even we are having here one more uh, advanced course is there drone drone technician okay like this uh, how many are there is course 62 you can see 62 plus uh, uh, 82 engineering trades total it is 144 trades are there again visually impaired trades five are there okay around 149 trades are there officially actually recognized by ncbt and similarly you can see apprenticeship side see these are the courses are the 200 plus this all actually nsqf okay apprentice scheme these are all courses are running in india you can see totally we are having 209 209 courses are there this is what actually industry demand skill development industry demand okay this is what actually i, I want to uh, give you the information on the government of india and uh, state governments even private uh, institutes also uh, we are having a cits scheme is there ats scheme is there and cts scheme is there see these are the schemes three types of uh, training skill development is running in india uh, i think how many are there uh, in india just i want to give you total okay i will uh, stop sharing i will share you another uh, another presentation uh, that is window yes here actually we are here uh, through the purely central government that's called actually directorate general of training dgt this is our uh, official uh, website also it is free it is there it's open to public you can see here because i want to explain you see role of dgt in skill ecosystem okay that is starts with the uh, dgt caters to different areas of skill ecosystem in a different way one is iti students iti trainers apprentices along with the industry and upgrading skill of technician and engineers and another is uh, linked with the industry you can see these are the schemes and uh, means projects are there with this here uh, upgradation of skills and all is having regulatory and uh, secretary to ncbt is all and industry connect apprenticeship short term and courses 
Chatham courses and uh, Plexi MOU. I think I explained all this, but once again, what is our role here in this, you can see. Next, uh, uh, this is our uh, organization that uh, we are head uh, with uh, IS uh, cadre officers, that is um, uh, JS level, means we used to call uh, DG, that is, that is a post of that. Under this, we are having a, uh, that, that is deputy general, uh, that is one, two, three are there. Where we are there? Here, these are the schemes. Under this uh, apprenticeship schemes, we are implementing and uh, along with the coordination and parliament matters and with the Strive project. Because Strive project is a very popular because a very huge amount is 22,000 crores are there for ITIs and industry clusters. And here you see, we are uh, having here central funded institutes. We are having how many institutes are there in India? 33 NSTI. Uh, one of that I actually belongs to Hyderabad. Uh, that is NSTI, National Skill Training Institute. Here actually we are implementing the, that uh, schemes. And that is what we are having here. Uh, triple P schemes either entire throughout the state, one NSTI is actually monitoring uh, the schemes. That is a triple P mode. I think you know very well, uh, public-private partnership and the model ITI. The central government is giving complete uh, around 12, uh, means uh, uh, around um, uh, four to five crores to set up a new model ITIs. And uh, I think explained about the LWE also, left wing extremism in different uh, 47 districts. Uh, of uh, 10 states it is covered and again polytechnic schemes also are implementing another you can see here rdsd is regional regional directorate of skill development entrepreneurship total we're having 22 offices in india each and every state is having now in karnataka bangalore is there and in hyderabad we're having telangana state and andhra pradesh in vijayawada and chennai in mean different different places and 15 extension centers also, because if it's a big state and distance is more, we are uh, uh, extension centers also to reach to the industry. Now you can see here, uh, total, uh, this means uh, what is uh, ITIs? It is started in the year of uh, 1950. Okay, this is launched uh, in the year of 1950. You can see the, here now at present uh, as on date uh, number of ITIs in India uh, 15,697 on roll now and uh, government is 3,055 and private we are having 12,642. See the seating capacity per annum admissions for this skill training 34.3 lakhs. See, in, in that again, percentage also is there, how actually we are monitoring. In that, uh, again, we are having uh, uh, the vocational skill training courses are there for female students, 11% okay, are there from this, out of this 34.3 lakhs. A number of trades, you see, approximately we told new also. I told here around 149 are there, but this is, uh, it is earlier, uh, because newly, just uh, I think recently, uh, maybe some four months back in the month of September 2021 only 56 trades we added here means revised uh, means one example I told you about armor welder for special for defense uh, purpose and uh, see duration of the this uh, skill training is uh, one year to two years and the entry criteria 10 standard and the age also uh, 14 and above 10 standard even 8 standard also, some of the co special courses are there. Actually, age, age is not criteria because you want a minimum uh, qualification, entry qualification. Based on that, we are taking 14 years. See, in, in this top uh, courses are there in, in ITS, that is um, electrician, fitter, and computer operator, and uh, programming assistant, and welder is there and uh, next uh, actually electronic uh, mechanic is there electronics mechanic and mechanic diesel and mechanic uh, motor vehicle wireman dartsman civil and uh, mechanic uh, rac rac means it is called representation and air conditioning 
see these are the total itis are uh, very very popular this you can see uh, i think electrician is very highest uh, the 12286 itis are and uh, tray with a capacity of 9,87,598. Again, followed by different uh, trades are there. This is what actually industry demand. Okay, this uh, regarding uh, industry, collaborating with the industry to improve labs in ITIs. Because I'll tell you about this, uh, how actually industry will be linked to the institute. Already it is there. Stripe project, triple P mode. This is what actually some of the uh, Jharkhand is there. ITI Nagaon and ITI Pusa Delhi. Maruti Suzuki, they set up their own uh, uh, labs, industry link here. They're training and they're actually employed only in the in that. And similarly, actually, Havels is there. This is ITI. It's not a showroom. It's not a company. This is ITI actually. In Inside the ITI, they set up their own uh, under uh, CSR, I think uh, corporate uh, social uh, responsibility under this scheme. And uh, even here is there, uh, means government of India plan to set up like this along with the industry link uh, because industry has to bring to the institute. Okay, that's what uh, actually instead of uh, going on on the job training to the industry, because their production is running, we cannot disturb that for training purpose. But here, same thing we can bring to the industry, to the institute. Uh, planning, uh, scaling up from 500 odd ITIs in India. Okay, that is what next you can see. Uh, Samsung is there, it is in Kerala. Government ITI, another government ITI, Gauhati, Assam is there. Like me, they set up their own lab in the ITIs. These are all government ITIs. Here also they plan to make here. Uh, I think uh, it is there actually, we used to call sometimes actually uh, research centers, but here we used to call actually incubation centers also established in different because uh, Industries are coming forward and giving the facility to the uh, student level, means institute level, means that will be benefit to all the people. It's not only ITI or diploma, other. And here you can see here, uh, DST actually I told you, DST, dual system training. What it is to uh, campus training model, ITI plus industry. See here defined actually, six months uh, course is there for that actually minimum one to three months they should be work in industry uh, because on the job on the job training straight away if it is uh, one year course is there and five months uh, here actually three to six months uh, the duration should be work in industry if two years is there and six to 12 months uh, means 50 percent plan to train in the industry okay. This is what actually DST mode. That is ITI plus actually industry. It's not only ITI, anything. It may be applicable to even polytechnic or engineering in college. May it is uh, already on uh, means under under discussion. It may come in future, very shortly. Okay, this is what actually uh, we are having here. Uh, 500 ITIs and 748. MOUs with the industry partners. Means industries are coming and they are uh, giving while training three months to six months, 15,000 stipend to the people, means uh, trainees per month, per month 15,000. Minimum, uh, because based on the industry, minimum they have to give 3,000 stipend throughout the course. One example I will tell you, IBM is uh, conducting cloud computing uh, course. Uh, it's two years course. All the two years, those people are giving a stipend, 3,000 rupees per month. And uh, on the job training, five months, they're giving 15,000 rupees per month for the per candidate as a stipend. See, this is what actually industry has to generate their own workers, their own uh, skilled people. This is what actually involvement of industries. This is what one scheme used to call DST. and uh, 
it is actually mandatory to make uh, every training center uh, with a um, MOU with the industry and 50% syllabus should be covered on the practical should be covered in industry and theories will be covered in ITIs or maybe training uh, institute because it, ITI why we, we are telling means it is very old uh, means traditional uh, industrial training institutes we used to call but nowadays they renamed our new name learning centers or uh, skill skilling centers in different names the different schemes they used to call names but as a means as a government of india it is still that word is their iti okay this is one what uh, i told these uh, two people are lexi mou one campus training model it is uh, industry only designing their own syllabus and admission to this. Uh, this is a two. One is Raymond, and there is Marsuski. They are uh, in this scheme, Plexi, MOU only. They are doing. See, because import customized industry relevant training. What job role means what <laughs> they, their um, technicians uh, are required or customer support or maybe assembly line or production line, they are training to them. And here of, offer flexibility to create tailored skilling programs. See, this is what uh, customized. That is a, a particular vendor, particular job role. Okay, that, means that's what uh, here, the new scheme is there, Plexi MOU. Means did not require only government or private institutes can uh, run uh, under the university or any council body. Industry also can come under that. Even actually, I want to inform here, uh, technical personnel in defense, example, army and navy and uh, air force. Indian Air Force. See this uh, after plus two, tenth or plus two or BSc or any degree. Okay, they are taking uh, means recruitment. Means I uh, Indian Air Force. Uh, I can tell IAF uh, technical personnel in Indian Air Force. They are conducting different uh, defense defense related training. Okay, that is also. Fair how uh, means implementing means I'll tell you we, we are from Karnataka and uh, Belgium is uh, very near there Sambra actually air air force air base is there throughout the means we don't know uh, throughout the country the recruitment of a technical personnel in Indian Air Force uh, done by Belgium Airport only. This is actually kind of information for everybody. Uh, at least uh, now onwards, you, you people can approach there. What is the procedure? How they will recruit science science graduates, especially science uh, plus two, means PUC or 10th. Uh, see, this is how the, if they are physically, medically fit, uh, and because they are defense people, but the technical people is there, okay, especially. Even we don't know there, in, in Belgium, means they'll do. Through uh, all over the country, all the states, candidates will come to the Belgium, uh, that uh, Sambra Air Base, and they will actually, every year, actually recruitment will be there for them. Okay, this is uh, actually information uh, that is also comes under defense uh, in uh, skill development. Because they are having, uh, uh, defense people are having a separate budget. Navy, and army and uh, this air force if here you can see uh, we told already about uh, reforms in curriculum development because uh, we have to they recently they aligned to the next 35 new trades and 11 industry 4.0 courses also you can see already india is uh, skill development courses uh, in that industry 4.0 already courses are added it's already uh, i think uh, the third batch is now going out now this industry 4.0 we are started uh, last three years back and every year we are sending in, this is third batch is running now 
and you can see here um, how actually the QR codes will uh, used in this uh, syllabus or uh, even admission to uh, apply, uh, ad application to and uh, admission and registration training uh, then next uh, it is going examination and certification completely it will be under Uh, you can call it e uh, means electronic form only then again the question bank on uh, bar skill portal see we are providing a, a complete question bank almost uh, so many i think trades i told more than 144 trades are there everything is available on this question bank is there and uh, again here we are having a english manuscript for nimi books Means in India, almost uh, all uh, means languages, uh, means uh, state wise, they made English, Hindi, Kannada, Tamil, Malayalam, Telugu, means like that, Gujarati, Marathi, means like that. So, uh, all uh, languages, uh, uh, means translation and uh, technical books. Uh, prepared by each and every state involved here. That is uh, called NIMI, National uh, Institute for Media Instruction. Yeah, this is what uh, I told you, ITI trainees, trainers, and uh, others also. Uh, even NSDC short-term courses also is there. These are uh, our schemes are there, uh, CTS, CITS, apprenticeship, and short-term courses. And here involved uh, so many other uh, uh, means Adobe is uh, uh, MOU, actually central government. That is what our department, Amrita University, as well as uh, Adobe, Cisco and IBM, even uh, Microsoft, uh, NASCOM, means we are having so many other, I will show you. Now these are the means information, examination for this, uh, our um, skill trainings and uh, nsda nsdc as well as uh, our dgt and ssdm example skill uh, state uh, skill development uh, mission okay, affiliation this uh, all uh, government of india only is doing and any other and grading also we are doing grading see grading of itis See here, grading of ITIs means the quality standardization. Even we're having government, private, and total, uh, we made here two star and a three star and four star above, means like that grading uh, we made. It is uh, one to five only. It's not one to 10. It is, means ITIs quality also maintained by us. <laughs> Yes, here actually we are having uh, trainers. I told you, no, trainers. Here, central institutes are uh, 33. In that, actually, 19 women NSTAs are there. National Skill Training Institute for women. Total 19 are there. And uh, 14 uh, are uh, means co-education. In that, uh, private institutes also are there. And state government also is conducting six state governments, uh, means uh, training of trainers means uh, teachers because teachers are very important without teachers we cannot train uh, required skilled workforce to the industry teachers are the main okay these are the to total capacity of what we are doing about uh, training of trainers and next uh, rpl is there and here now apprenticeship you can see here it if it if it is visible please uh, see the number ministry of railways tata motors number of apprenticeship because apprenticeship mela we are conducting uh, national level all state governments are involved here uh, to bring the unemployed youth or uh, ITI youth all there we are giving in all sectors 
the Ministry of Railways having apprenticeship, Tata Motors and BHL, uh, I told you about this uh, Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited, uh, Udan project, these people only helping and ages of customer support, Gujarat State uh, Road Transport also, like our uh, KSRTC and all. And similarly, Maruti Suzuki Limited, see this many of uh, miss apprenticeship they are taking and uh, BEL also. Marsiski, BL, AP, Andhra Pradesh uh, State Road Transportation, ONGC, and Ordnance Factory, Defense side, with Ordnance Factory. They are all actually taking apprenticeship. And how many are there? You can see number of uh, apprenticeship 1.7 lakhs. Even one day uh, they are taking, means these are all people are involved throughout the country and taking. This is what actually apprenticeship is one, one more after uh, qualification. Even their six months course or one year course or two years course, they are having the opportunity to do the apprenticeship means industry. If they are uh, gaining good skills and uh, knowledge, practice in industry, industry straight away they will observe. Okay, this and all we are maintaining means we are monitoring in this. Okay, this is what uh, actually apprenticeship side also it is one of the skill because industry attached straight away to the industry. With the stipend we are giving. Okay, here, this is what actually outreach through NST and nodal ITIs. We are reaching to the entire country, each and every district wise also. District skilling committee, we are having under uh, the uh, chairmanship of uh, district collector. Uh, in, in throughout the means inside the district and taluka level, what is the special skills are then each and every state? That skills we are giving a key is implementation because rural area special skills are there to make uh, craft uh, like uh, toys and all. Okay, for that also specially we are uh, through the district skilling committee we are reaching to the people. Through ITIs, we are involving, and so many technical institutes also uh, actually adding to that. See, this is what actually the government of India is doing, and uh, so many other schemes are there. You can see here, uh, with help of uh, regional uh, uh, level, uh, that's a state level that's called RDSD. Uh, here, implementation and monitoring of all schemes of uh, DGT, and coordinating with the trade testing cell for examination of all schemes and uh, here coordination with the ministry of schemes like uh, pmkby and then they are uh, upadhyaya gramin uh, uh, this one uh, kaushal yojana ddu gky and another scheme is there nulm and uh, see these are all actually uh, purely central government our department is uh, doing now i will tell you about ssc's just to give me five minutes time, we'll complete already time is there. Sir, is uh, time is already over. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you take you can take a couple of minutes. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, a couple of minutes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, this is what I want to show you. Uh, I think this is visible. Uh, sector skill councils. Just a brief. Uh, already is available uh, online. Use NSDC under uh, National Skill Development Corporation. You can see. And uh, one more here. You can see these are the 36 uh, skill uh, sector councils are there. 36 sector skill council assesses are there. And uh, there are over uh, 600 corporate representatives in the governing council. It means uh, uh, reputed industry heads are uh, is a part of this our uh, skill uh, councils. 
example you can see here aerospace and aviation and agriculture apparel automotive skills beauty wellness and uh, this is uh, bfsi you can see here capital goods skill council construction skill domestic worker you see how many are there in india this all actually established under the uh, pmo office nsdc under this 36 uh, and one more 37th is there actually defense sector but that will be different level but that it's not open here uh, actually electronic skill sector council is there and food industries are there furniture is there and gem and jewelry handcrafts healthcare sector is there very important and uh, recently this covid 19 we we conducted the three special we designed three special skill sector uh, means training skills uh, each uh, having a three months each we trained across india around more than uh, 15000 people to help uh, in the covid uh, uh, situation uh, to operate oxygen plant oxygen concentrator and uh, and uh, to uh, help means uh, even rural area people can reach and help but means that level uh, means a very uh, short period three months the course designed and trained also around 15000 all over india each and every state because whenever covid situation comes oxygen plant operation and all immediately uh, this skilled workforce will be ready for to handle this okay similarly we are having uh, that is uh, iron and steel sector plumbing sector and infrastructure development it ites also along with actually nascom is the main uh, uh, head for this the nascom company and uh, leather sector and life sciences logistic and again management and entrepreneurship professional skills see like this we are having uh, more, most of the even uh, green jobs uh, solar side skill council for uh, green jobs and mining sector skill person disabilities also physical education sports also see these are the even telecom sector tourism textile sector this is for all uh, about nsdc nsda and dzt and the state uh, state government state skill uh, skill development missions this is what actually government of india is uh, when you start uh, going through this right, it is ocean of opportunities are there in in this sector skill india sector but people are not aware that because of advertisement and reaching to the people I mean, government is uh, very slow but reaching uh, very fast within this uh, 2014 to 2022 now it, it reached very very fast uh, under the leadership of uh, honorable prime minister thank you very much anything is there please uh, one or two minutes uh, interaction please sir hello sir thank you so much sir bani bagi sir it was really informative talk Sir, we have few questions. Uh, please, ma'am. The question asked by Vidya, what yes. are the opportunities given to women, especially in any ways by three uh, these agencies? How to be aware of that? I will repeat, sir. What please, are the what are the opportunities given to women, especially in any ways by these agencies? How to be aware of that? Yes, ma'am. But I'm uh, given co complete uh, information about what are the sectors are there, skilled uh, skill area in India, and especially women, you know, uh, I think a lot of uh, opportunities are especially for them. We are having uh, co education, we are having just 14 institutes in India, and uh, uh, means the central government, I am telling, the state government, I will tell you, especially for women. In Skill India, means what are the opportunities are there? 19 institutes are there in India for women's uh, uh, means, uh, skilling. And uh, another one is uh, state government. Uh, we are running women's ITIs separately. And apart from this, through actually NSDC, they can become an entrepreneur or they can start up the skilling centers. Yes, madam. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, one more question. Please. The question asked by Manjunath K. Professors after retirement 
can they work in skill training institutes yes madam it is open in our website itself it is open is there i shown some of the websites especially dgt.gov.in we are we are taking retired uh, person because more experienced in the skill practical way and their ex, ex, their experience should reach to the young generation in india for them special uh, uh, online registration is there madam okay sir thank you so one more yes. question yes, by sir. prashant revankar what are the major challenges to make the programs more participative and beneficial ah uh, yes madam actually we already reached through district skilling committees uh, through each and every uh, district in india uh, and state wise actually mobilization we have to do man it's our duty madam district administration is because they are receiving a special fund for skilling fund for that madam each and every district is receiving so much of fund for skilling uh, this is so okay madam or anything okay sir okay so thank you so right. much sir for accepting our invitation and delivering the talk thank you sir okay thank you very much sir i am having one more question sir i am brother from sdm engineering college darwad sir ha uh, please sir uh, sir uh, could you please tell us what are the opportunities are there for higher education institute especially we have that uh, lot of recent trends like ai ml data science iot so for skill development in these areas uh, could you please tell us uh, uh, where you can get that uh, funding and other things sir ha uh, sir actually uh, you, actually you told uh, we are having around 11 courses uh, industry 4.0 mean this is ai ml we are uh, collaboration with ibm we already uh, started conducting uh, uh, government of india uh, sorry that state government itis all the itis instructors principals and um, trainers we trained under ai ml sir artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning uh, means with help of uh, ibm ibm is our uh, our partner sir globally and sir uh, thank fund- you thank you so much sir uh, and funding also through nsdc the means pm office and nsdc and each and every state is having actually nsdc uh, offices are there state government wise open any any sector sir i, I told you 37 sectors are there all the sectors you can approach them otherwise if you go nsdc online you can go state wise actually you will get the who are the people are there to contact them and the online on online applications are there sir any information you can get sir online applications okay okay sir we'll talk to you sir later thank you ah, so please, much sir please sir sir chakrasali sir how are you sir thank you sir abhinav ji sir no sir for highly informative talk we have thrown a light on the uh, various government initiatives state government and uh, central government initiatives i hope it is uh, will be an useful to participants faculty members across the institutes and uh, they can think of uh, taking some initiative writing some project or having collaboration work with the skill development institute so thank you very much on behalf of our uh, college and our department uh, for having your great session uh, on day 2 1 thank you sir uh bani bhai ji thank you so much ah uh, yes sir sir chakra <laughs> sir sir thank you very much sir uh, it's my pleasure i attended i, I heard your lecture uh, with the professor brother uh, we were together yes sir <laughs> so hey, yes sir good morning sir told about you only sir <laughs> ಪಾರ್ಕವಿ from ms rit uh, bangalore she has already joined to this uh, session uh, in a in another 5 minutes we will be starting the session 2 uh, first of all i would like to welcome the parkavi madam to this uh, session madam welcome madam parkavi madam yes sir. yes sir thank you sir 
uh, welcome you madam okay. thank you so in a within another 5 minutes we'll start this yes, session sir. Okay. yes sir sure sir sure okay. thank you thank okay. you okay okay
ನಾನು ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ಸೊ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಟು ಆಫ್ ಡೇ ಟು ನೌ ದ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಪಾರ್ಕವಿ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಬೆಂಗೌಡ್ ನೌ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಎ ಟಾಕ್ ಆನ್ ಅಪರ್ಚುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಇನ್ ಡಾಟಾ ಅನಾಲಿಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಮೇಡಮ್ ಪಾರ್ಕೋಯ್ ಮೇಡಮ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು thank you sir welcome madam okay yes sir uh, now before uh, madam starts presentation i request uh, chanakya madam to introduce uh, madam to our participants madam good morning to all good morning madam myself chanakya working as assistant professor in the department of enc stm college of engineering and technology darwad now i am going to introduce the eminent resource person professor parkavi msrit bangalore who is going to throw the light on the topic opportunities and entrepreneurship in data analytics dr parkavi madam is working as an associate professor in the department of computer science ramaya institute of technology her areas of interest include data analytics educational data mining social network analysis compiler design and educational technology about education details madam completed degree Uh, phd in 2018 in pereyaru mane uh, maneyam institute of science and technology and me in the year 2005 anna university be in the year 2001 bharati dashana university and diploma in computer technology in the year 1998 in shisha sai institute of technology about membership of professional societies Madam is a IEEE professional member, life member of the Indian Society for Technical Education from 2013, Cloud Computing Community, IEEE, Green ICT Community, IEEE, Networking, Women, ACM, SIG Mobile Program, Data Engineering, IEEE. Madam has a one patent in his credit. She has published her research work in reputed conference, peer-reviewed journals and book chapters. Madam is NPTEL SPOC for local chapter and involved in quality check process of NPTEL uh, translation work with NPTEL team and has given talk on data and decision engineering in IEEE students of skill development. She has delivered talks and webinars on data uh, analytics, OBE, MOOC, usage in curriculum analytics. educational data mining and educational technology to various institutes in karnataka tamil nadu and andhra pradesh madam has conducted tutorials and workshops in reputed conference hosted by iit bombay reva university and jntu she has organized and being resource person for workshops on educational technology conducted in msrt during her free time she visits government school to teach about computer to the students so by this brief introduction i welcome you ma'am for the today's program yes thank you for that introduction ma'am thank you sir for inviting me and giving giving me this opportunity to give the talk on opportunities and entrepreneurship in data analytics so shall i start ma'am yes ma'am yeah okay so uh, here uh, i insist the people to become uh, the iieee members also because through that also we'll get the opportunities to uh, work with other people okay so iieee kind of uh, professional membership if you get involved in so even some of the entrepreneurs also will be there in that iieee community community right so it will be really helpful for us to get along with one another and what are the ideas needed to be shared among one another uh, we can really do that through the um, this kind of communities okay so i encourage people uh, who are all the audience today uh, if you are not uh, a professional member uh, of any of this uh, kind of communities uh, it's pretty communities you can become a member of it okay so you will get to work with those people in some of the projects and uh, in the 
for the social cause also will be involved in some of the works okay so through that the opportunities uh, for the academicians or even some of the academicians um, like as a part time they'll be the entrepreneurs also okay so uh, it will really help us to shine forth in that area so i encourage all of you to um, become members of the professional bodies like ieee acm csa and all okay so uh, let's move on to uh, the first topic today why data analytics is needed okay so nowadays uh, if you look into the uh, companies or industries or educational uh, domain or any academic uh, domain if you look into also okay so completely the scenario is changing okay it's not like before okay even uh, the how the technology innovative uh, is getting involved in the educational sector for teaching learning process and uh, performing the assessing task of the students research okay so that will help us to enforce some of the innovative uh, teaching methodologies uh, and the uh, um, delivery methodology methodologies as well as uh, how we are going to conduct the assessment uh, uh, methods for the students okay so uh, similarly in the uh, companies also companies and industries also if you look into it's like the dynamicity what is happening in the industry or in the educational sector it's like totally moving taking a turn okay that's what we have seen uh, in the last two years of this pandemic situation also okay how it is happening how it is affecting our life and how we have come up with the uh, new jobs to overcome all those uh, flaws okay what we have faced in the pa uh, past okay so we people uh, the dynam dynamically they we got adopted the teachers and students got adopted to the uh, online teaching and learning strategies right okay through that only we are uh, like now any meeting if you want to conduct or uh, uh, anything if you want to convey to the uh, convey uh, like these kind of fdps or workshops or uh, any ieee events also we conduct online okay there is no uh, communication barrier because of pandemic or epidemic whatever it is okay so now all the businesses like for the educational sector uh, the um, chief of these organizations also okay whoever whichever uh, domain you consider all all of them are like a business for them okay so they how come it it is going to benefit the society in that manner if you see educational sector will be providing more um, social concern okay uh, compared to other ones okay so uh, all the companies they want to uh, look into the uh, benefit what they can uh, get through. how can they improve their uh, business okay so that's what they want to look into so for that the data analytics really contribute so much the data analytics techniques like regression analysis or uh, correlation um, uh, kind of techniques how they are going to contribute to identify what are the uh, new innovative things they can do and analyze the uh, business data to benefit the business and to improve the business and get more gain out of it okay so uh, how the enterprises can get more return for that also the data analytics plays a major role okay previously people used to the business people if you have observed they used to work with the intuition okay or with the only with the experience okay if this much these kind of strategies if you do uh, people will get benefited like that we used they used to do but now uh, using the historical data what we have collected uh, with respect to the business and the customers who are involved with okay so based on that the enterprise return okay it can be increased a lot okay and the infrastructure cost and all can be reduced a lot using the data analytics only the capital amount will be more initially for a uh, uh, involving this data analytic techniques and uh, uh, taking up the data scientists for performing those tasks but once if it is in place it's like very it uh, it can be very easy for the businesses and the enterprises to grow in their businesses okay so that's why any companies if you take okay software or uh, hardware companies also if you take there are uh, so much uh, 
uh, research they have a research uh, division separately in all the companies who are really uh, performing well right if you look into that they have a research wing with them okay so with that they will look look into the customer need okay they will conduct the survey what are all the things customer need and they will try to fulfill the customers need also okay that's why this uh, research uh, sector research wings and all they associated with that uh, companies okay then uh, uh, there are like data analytics it involves so many uh, if a person wants to perform the data analytics he should be good in statistics okay he should know how the statistics plays a major role in data analytics to improve the business okay so is data analytics a good career yes really even uh, like if i want to shift into data analytics uh, in a company like there is so much uh, scope is there even you might have observed so many of uh, the teachers also like now there are so many open calls right for from the companies for uh, development side as well as for the uh, data scientist post and all so so many youngsters we observe that they are moving into the industry okay uh, even the some of the um, uh middle aged people also okay who are like 40 to 45 those people also moving into the hr related or uh, the research um, sectors of the industries okay so if you look into the data um, how much data is getting generated per day okay on an average okay internationally in the world 2.5 quintillion bytes are generated per day okay and um, what about the salary for the uh, data analyst okay it is really huge compared to other uh, software developers for the data analyst the salary is uh, really huge okay so people if you uh, students or uh, any youngsters if you really want to shine forth in the data analysis analysis field you can take a shift into that really there is so much opportunities there and job security also more in it so what does data analytics engineering do okay so we will collect the his, historical data related to any um, company or any industry if you take okay what are the historical data and how the um, customers or clients involved and generated the data okay without their knowledge okay so uh, even if a simple google search if you take okay in a particular um, place okay during the pandemic time when it was in uh, like first wave time and all people uh, how the government uh, can analyze such kind of uh, in which place the uh, covid spread is more in which region of bangalore or in which region of a particular state uh, where the covid uh, spread is more if they want to analyze how can they do that through the google search so people through their mobile or through their uh, uh, desktop they might have searched like uh, these are all the symptoms okay we came to know that okay these are all the symptoms of covid immediately what we'll do we'll um, if you get little cough or cold a little fever it may not be covid also but when you know that these are the symptoms immediately you will try to search for that and you will try to analyze okay uh, what are the symptoms of covid we might have checked okay if that is there really what we have to do okay where are all the um, diagnostic centers like uh, nominated by, from the government or to the uh, private hospitals we will search for that okay and where can we get the vaccine and all like all those information we will search right immediately so similarly so the Uh, google if you consider in when we are searching all this data so so many people from the particular region if they are searching for that through that the google can give a alert to the government okay government sector uh, who will manage that particular region okay in this region so many people are searching for this particular uh, symptom okay which is really bothering the g- bothering okay so they can send alert if so much malaria kind of spread is more in a region so the symptoms related to that okay if people are searching okay immediately there can be alert sent to the government bodies okay in that way the data analytics really plays a major role which will help the government also to bring forth the smooth governing and helping the uh, public 
okay so uh, how the analytics is related to warehouse so in warehouse usually all the historical data will store it the raw data can be stored there so for betterment of the business and for the uh, betterment of the customers or clients the data can be analyzed okay so based on that the prediction can be done and it will help the um, industry for the company people to promote their business so the people who are involved in this will be called as data analytics engineer so what is the scope of data analytics in india and overseas okay in uh, banking sectors also will be using the data analytics okay so or the predictive analytics can be used there so for example if the bank wants to uh, if there are so many people like after the pandemic uh, if you uh, observe like now it's like slowly it has reached the end of it i feel okay so now so many people want to uh, uh, regenerate their uh, businesses okay so they want to um, Uh, start with a new business the people who have done already some business they may want to start up with a new business so if they are applying for the loans and or how the bank can handle it okay how will they um, perform the uh, data analytics with those customers <coughs> okay so what can be done the Mm, historical data who are all the customers what are their genders what are their occupations okay and what kind of businesses they have done already what is their income so um, what are their assets all the data can be connected collected and it can be analyzed okay this particular age in this age category in this income range okay and in this uh, gender and the number of people in their families this all that Uh, things if with that information the uh, people who have taken the loan within that range they have repaid the amount okay they repaid the loan correctly okay so they will um, uh, when i am applying for a loan immediately like i am a female like associate professor uh, and income is this much okay and i want this much loan okay so when i Uh, apl- uh when i submit application to the bank bank can analyze that with the historical data okay first they will check what is my history with that uh, bank okay whatever the loan i have taken whether i have cleared it everything or not and my age category and it's totally different now right so they will check previously uh, okay the people from this particular um, uh, institution or from the organization uh, who all taken the loan they have paid properly okay then we can give the loan to this uh, lady also they will determine it okay similar uh, so uh, in that way the predictive analysis will uh, um, help the bank people to avoid the uh, fraudulent kind of uh, transactions okay so they will really eliminate okay uh, for the same if i have applying if i am applying for a loan but previously some of the loans out of some five six loans only two i have paid properly but other loans if they are not paid properly then immediately what can be done uh, they will ask for the surety okay more kind more surety they'll ask in that way the data analytics will help the bank to avoid uh, certain losses okay so uh, for the manufacturing se- sector also the data anal- analytics will help okay so for example uh, uh, the coffee powder manufacturing company okay so that you consider okay so uh, previously they may be selling it in a bottle or a, a big po- pockets okay so now um, everybody will not buy that sometimes like the if if you uh, see the people who in a um, metro city and all if you observe no uh, people who come for work they will not buy the big one and use okay so you know only one person will be in a room okay so that time small such it they will try to buy and use okay so the the data analytics they uh, using data analytics they can give a suggestion to those people okay being data analyst a person can give a suggestion like based on the uh, history of uh, how the competitors are working how the other products uh, okay like um, tea or coffee uh, related um, data they will uh, collect and they will analyze okay how they got the benefit out of that their uh, product selling so similarly okay we can also come up with a new small sachets um, selling 
okay so in this way this is one of the example in this way for the companies the data and uh, analytics uh, process will help them to come up with new ideas okay uh, so initially when whenever uh, some new product okay sample is in the market okay immediately in the social media like uh, facebook and all like how the people are talking about that product so that can be analyzed okay so based on that the input can be given to the manufacturing company whether they have to manufacture more number of uh, 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 small sachets like that or they have to stop it okay the taste of sometimes we really think right uh, when you buy some of the um, chocolates in a big uh, larger quantity it will be good but when in loose when we purchase from the uh, medical shops or somewhere no it won't be that much taste okay so we will think that okay the actual good quality they have given for the larger quantity and what are there in the last we got it like that kind of uh, comment uh, whether we are sharing in the social media or not people will the business people will try to collect the uh, very simple communication what we do okay in the social media so based on these kind of data what people are talking okay in the social media they will analyze that that will help the uh, business people to come to a conclusion about the uh, in future what they have to do whether they can go ahead with the manufacturing of new product or they have to reduce little okay so they will uh, come to a conclusion based on the data analytics input okay even for health in healthcare also data analytics is uh, playing a major role in our country as well as um, all over the world okay even for the cyber security also data analytics uh, plays a major role okay so what's the future scope of uh, data analytics uh, engineers okay so they can enter into data security okay so kind of a uh, uh, little bit if you uh, learn the blockchain technology and if you know very well about the data analytics um, upgrade yourself with some of the data security related uh, certification courses then really you can contribute more uh, in the blockchain technology kind of uh, new uh, networking technologies okay then um, iot uh, products also the data analytics engineers can involve and work with that so for example um, uh, in the hospital if the uh, uh, stripes or like uh, uh, put up in the hands of the people okay they are attached to their body so uh, if they are uh, if they are shifted from the icu to the normal ward okay so they are uh, instead of uh, attaching one attender to everybody one nurse to each and every patient so uh, automatically the sensors attached to the stripes which are uh, uh, paced or attached to this uh, patients it will uh, sense how is their temperature how are their heartbeat okay how are their oxygen level everything will be monitored and uh, it will be analyzed using the data analytics uh, models and it will reduce the manpower involved in uh, uh, helping the patients okay and the next one is uh, growth of cognitive analytics okay so uh, the data analytic engineers can they can involve in cognitive analytics projects also and uh, other open source solutions okay uh, as well as for uh, providing um, see even if you have some raw data where some of the data are missing okay so to predict what are the missing data for that also uh, the data analytics contributions are needed their works are needed more so the companies like jp morgan accenture microsoft adobe flipkart ag instant yang wipro vodafone and deloitte and all uh, uh, they recruit the data analytics engineers for uh, security purpose and iot related product, uh, products uh, in their uh, companies so now uh, let's see some of the information about the average salary for the data analyst okay so um, now it's still more okay so whatever i have given it's like last years or before that okay now still it uh, it is increased a lot more okay so because um, the infrastructure cost of what is spending it is reduced because many people work from home right so because of that the industry is uh, they have saved so much money okay so that they can uh, give it for the people who are 
involved in data analytical operations for improving their businesses okay so on an average uh, in india 10 lakhs per annum okay for the data analyst but still Uh, uh, because of uh, what kind of work really the data analyst is going to do because of that still it's more and uh, with your uh, knowledge and skills and how much visualization effects you are going to do with the data historical data and how you are going to insight into the data based on that your salary still increases okay so with with 5 years of experience 15 lakhs per annum and 10 years of experience 20 lakhs per annum in that way the data analyst salary get increased so uh, the people who are working in data analytics like if they want to move to r and d sectors um, in the company still they can able to move into okay so uh, where are all this data analytics they have their career growth okay so in any um, private organizations or government sectors or you can become an entrepreneur also okay so basically what we will do uh, as a data analyst what we supposed to do we'll take the raw data set historical data set which are like previously before 5 uh, years or 10 years if you look into that those data what we will do with the data like that we used to think nobody has considered that now each and every data they are taking it and they are analyzing it and they are making money out of it okay so uh, the data analyst he has to look into the raw data set he has to write a code for that okay literally he'll not to look into that he will he has to write a code for that okay so he can make use of the predefined codes uh, like in r or python if you look into there are uh, predefined uh, functions are available uh, only the parameters what you want to pass you can pass it okay and uh, we have to uh, give insight into the raw data set and identify the uh, Uh, what in what manner the customers have behaved so based on that data driven decisions we have to make decisions we have to predict for and forecast what we the business people have to do for their uh, business growth and get more uh, money out of it okay but the customer should not uh, feel at any point of time that uh, their privacy is lost okay and they are uh, they are providing their data to the business people for the betterment of business we should not feel okay the customers should not feel that okay we should be like feeling okay as usual but the business should capture our data without the knowledge of the customers and analyze it okay so even if you have observed like uh, for example uh, if i have gone to um, okay reliance trend okay so every month uh, like weekly every month weekly once if i'm going that to on uh, tuesdays okay so uh, i i'm going and purchasing certain uh, thing and coming okay so now i have moved uh, from one city to another city okay i have gone to delhi or bombay okay so i have gone there so now uh, there um, maybe like i'm staying there for one month Okay, so now if I cross one of the relay strand, automatically I'll get a uh, before reaching in that road and the road uh, which I'm traveling. If it is reaching towards relay strand, so immediately I uh, I should get a message telling that uh, some attractive message as uh, advertisement. Okay, it will pop in. I should not feel that it is an advertisement. I should feel like okay, it's a recommendation like that. Okay. Uh, you have missed the recommendation sometimes it will be like this uh, you have missed purchasing the uh, particular uh, thing okay for one month you have missed uh, visiting the reliance train it's nearby it's like uh, one minute ahead like that kind of recommendation we make it okay so that will really uh, uh, like you will feel okay if you are going in your own vehicle right if you have the cab and if you are going on your own if you're not traveling in uh, public um, Uh, vehicle okay then what you'll do okay let us see okay i miss purchasing okay let us see like that okay it's like we will get tempted we'll try to go that that's a way like how the business people uh, want to uh, make their business okay so the how this is happening so all my history of data it is uh, collected and stored okay and uh, uh, like every day it, if it keeps on uh, sending me uh, the recommendation i will not prefer okay so for example saturdays only i have gone to the reliance train if that pattern uh, if it is uh, stored 
okay it has analyzed okay this lady is going there with this mobile okay through the mobile only it will capture where i'm roaming around okay even if somebody has taken my mobile and gone to delhi and if they are going towards reliance right they'll get the same uh, recommendation okay so uh, that way uh, the data analytics really help the business so uh, uh, to get a uh, good uh, insight into that and improve their businesses okay so what are the skills required for a data analytics career okay so we have to know the data visualization tools okay so uh, if you even the even simple uh, tools like tableau click and data mint these are some of the data visualization tools okay so the entrepreneurs these we will see we'll see the entrepreneurs list for these um, tools also okay there are some of the entrepreneurs really they thought okay some charts has to be drawn for this kind of data okay how to correlate them and give a, a chart or a visual a drawing to the people who are who really want to analyze that okay so now uh, if you have for example uh, as there are many faculty here um, <coughs> if you take students data in uh, compiler design or a data structure kind of subject how they have scored it really so if you have the mark li marks list okay in internal this much in 20 mark component this much mark they have scored and in the ac this much uh, uh, grade they have scored so if you look into that uh, for 150 students or 160 students if you see uh, you have to count it and analyze the same thing in a graph if you put it and see you will get a clear idea okay so uh, for example if we have to give a, uh, a report to the uh, hod or principal or uh, um, see like higher ups if you want to give a report to them like how they have, how the students have performed in some analytical subject so if you take a chart okay in the if your report consists of a chart instead of having that uh, 160 students marks okay if you go with that and show they will really get okay uh, this grade so many people have scored it, it's easy for them to study what is it so uh, anything diagrammatically when you see the picture of it if you see you know it will really you'll get the real uh, glimpse of what's happening in that okay so for that purpose only the entrepreneurs uh, uh, who is the leader who started with the tableau and all you no know, he he looked into that and he has start, uh, started that and develop the uh, tool and uh, uh, upgrading it okay and the data analytical uh, person he should know the some of the languages like python r okay basically if you are from csc you will know um, sql and dbms you will know that okay so even uh, some of you for your research if you have done your research uh, and if you have tested uh, some of the experiments yourself with the data any project any research if you look into no finally you will you may be doing anything iot or uh, embedded system related or software related anything if you take finally you will end up with analyzing the data okay you may be uh, from uh, electrical or electronics or civil or mechanical or any field in any field if you have done research finally what you will get out of it is some data and you will analyze and you will conclude okay this is this is what i have analyzed i have um, i came to know that this is fault and this is true or what can happen in future okay so that's what you you might have done it so any research finally it involves the data ana analysis okay for that any techniques you might have used you might have used regression or clustering or any kind of classification or correlation any anything you might have used okay so if you are really good in uh, sql and dbms then uh, updating upgrading yourself with the data analytical related concepts is very easy easily you can do it okay even for uh, one example i want to tell here uh, for i have uh, done my uh, research in uh, educational data mining and educational technology so there uh, i have taken um, uh, students data okay students historical data i have taken and uh, i wanted to uh, compare two strategies which are good uh, and which is not uh, feasible for a particular course as well as uh, if you want to perform some of the association rule mining okay and uh, like students if they have performed like this they are uh, 
in later in the future semester um, there are many project or seminar or the project they can select in the particular domain okay such kind of things if you want to analyze uh, you can make use of one of the long languages which are listed here python or r you can use okay even sometimes uh, pl sql if you want to use also you can use it but what i felt no the code what we used to write in python it's like that's what i have felt uh, you may have a different opinion so similarly when you start working with the languages you will come to know what are the uh, drawbacks in one language what is the advantage in another language so the code what i uh, struggled to write in python okay maybe like one month i took time uh, to read from the excel and uh, uh, uh csv files okay and uh, extracting the students information and uh, uh, performing the rec- designing the recommendations deriving the recommendations and all same thing in r no in one week i have done and the code what i used to do in uh, python for one week in one day I, this is what the comparison i made it uh, like the youngsters in the in this fdp program you may have a different uh, uh, idea about it you can share in the chat if you have something okay and whatever the analysis we are going to do first we have to study about the data clearly okay then uh, uh, what kind of um, uh, insight you can do and what decision you want to uh, get derive from that okay we should be clear in it if that is not clear then um, we cannot able to help the business people being the data analyst we cannot able to help the people okay so what are the different carrots in uh, data analytics okay uh, data scientist data engineer data analyst machine learning engineer data journalist this one really i like data journalist okay it's a combination of journalism and the data analyst okay so both the comma uh, pack you should you should be you should have done degree in journalism then uh, uh, update yourself with some certification course related to data anal- analytics then you can become data journalist okay and database admin then financial analyst so if you want to become financial analyst you have to um, do some of the uh, mba degree in finance okay or uh, economics or uh, account related degree you could have done okay then along with that upgrade yourself with the uh, data analytical courses then you can become financial analyst then business analyst <laughs> then product analyst business intelligence analyst marketing analyst quantitative analyst data visualization specialist okay and functional analyst so if you are really if you have understood your uh, data okay uh, for which business you are working with okay if you have understood the data thoroughly and how the data flow will be there if you have understood so uh, through which graph you can really give the insight of that okay which will help the business uh, strategies to uh, come up with new ideas okay so uh, that can be done through the data visualization specialist okay then functional analyst and the uh, data system developer so uh, now let's see uh, what these uh, people do each one of them here we have seen uh, different carrots in uh, data analytics so what are these people each and every person what they will be contributing to it so the data scientist will collect the raw data and perform the analysis through different techniques okay so if the data is very complex one then which are the um, uh advanced analytics has to be done over that he has to look into that so for that some of the programming languages like uh, python or he'll be using and some of the data visualization tools like um, uh click or uh, tableau kind of data visualization tools he'll be using so the next one is data engineer so the data engineer will uh, uh, first collect the uh, massive amount of data huge data sets he'll take okay han ki has to identify how he is going to efficiently and effectively carry out the data analytics process and uh, through uh, the visualization tools how he is going to give the uh, report about the complete data okay how the data is uh, acting and what are the correlation if the data input data change how the other patterns change all those things 
okay so that will be done by the data engineer so he will design the uh, data analytical models and uh, he will test them okay so uh, the data engineer when we uh, design for example a uh, predictive analytical model if he has designed okay so the historical data it is fed to the uh, model data analytical model and the prediction happen the forecasting happen so he has to validate okay so this is a prediction okay so he has to uh, tell how much um, um, actually the accuracy is there in the prediction okay so for that what can we do can anybody tell how uh, will the data engineer test the uh, a prediction accuracy can anybody tell anybody can unmute and tell <clears throat> see for example we have predicted something okay so how will you know that uh, one particular astrologer is predicting correctly or not so in the same way here the prediction also we can check anybody can unmute and tell in the past history history of the yeah from the past history of uh, what the related data no like the prediction has happened okay how will we know that the prediction is uh, correct or not how what is the accuracy of the prediction how will we come to know how will you know the success rate of the data collected based on yes. the success yes yes so how will we know that uh, astrologer is uh, predicting correctly or not uh, madam uh, if i interpret it like this can it be my by mapping back to the data from where uh, the prediction is made Ma yeah. map back yeah yeah uh, how will we do that you know for example let us uh, go from the astrologer example so one uh, there are two astrologers one astrologer um, he has given uh, five prediction for like seeing all those uh, whatever the procedure they do right so they have predicted something he has predicted uh, five things and for uh, for many people okay for many people for everybody whatever he has predicted everything has uh, like come true and another astrologer like uh, only 50 percentage it has happened for one person for another person nothing has happened so whom they will rely on astrologer 1 or astrologer 2 astrologer 1 whatever he predicted everything has come true astrologer 2 whatever he has predicted it's like for one person 50 percentage correct another person 30 percentage true okay so in that way uh, uh, if anybody if you want to suggest a new customer so what we will be doing we will tell that okay go to the astrologer one we'll tell in the same way here here also the data engineer if he wants to uh, find out what is the uh, prediction accuracy if he wants to uh, identify that he has to like we have predicted something okay for the for the particular business prediction happened the prediction results are there prediction result 1 2 3 like that you have so he has to wait in the, so he will roll out the plan he has to wait um, maybe for one month in one month period the whatever he has predicted it will happen or it will not happen okay so that will be there okay so what is the result so that result and predicted one we have to compare so we have to the companies they have to uh, they will have the predicted uh, forecasted uh, uh, results also and what exactly happening in the real world so that data also they will take and they will validate both of them so based on that pointing to, are you pointing to validation data validation this is totally different sir. like uh, this is totally different yeah, it's yeah. not a data validation no it's not data validation it's totally different so checking the accuracy with the real world happenings okay okay yeah, uh, yeah. yes ma'am there, there are some matrices are there like uh, uh, accuracy recall that f score i think this is what you are correlating it seems ma'am yes 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 thank you so 
yeah any data analyst uh, related books if you look into no so if you want to really check uh, whether the data a particular data analyst or data engineer uh, their implementations are working correct or not their uh, models or their analysis models are working correctly or not if you want to look into really what we have to do we have to take the predicted result also the predictions also we have to take and what's happening in the real world that also we have to take and we have to compare okay so how you will rely on astrologer in the same way here also the companies will rely on the for companies the astrologers are the data analysts only they will predict and give okay and their prediction should be correct otherwise uh, like every time say, like uh, out of five prediction what they have done like uh, if four are uh, really giving a success rate for the uh, companies and if one is going wrong it's okay but all the predictions if they are going continuously if they are failing what will they do they'll fire them out okay so there are some risk factors involved here so we have to if you really want to um, become a data analyst for a particular company we have to really upgrade ourselves with the latest technologies which are coming forth and uh, new, what are the new tools are uh, uh, coming in market for the uh, data analysis okay so all those thing they have to uh, upgrade themselves and they have to use it for the business predictions and the next one is data analyst so the data analyst uh, will uh, uh, understand the data okay so that's what we will tell our students also whenever they want to work with uh, data analytical related uh, projects right we'll tell them that first understand the data that that is that should be our uh, first guidance to them so simply if they have uh, come up with okay this is a problem we want to solve something they have developed and government it won't work out so first what is the data they are going to work with we should have the uh, uh, correct understanding about it so some of the in uh, past if you have observed people have used excel uh, uh, ms access am i audible yes ma'am you are audible okay yes, okay 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 because i connected to wifi something it shown no access or something so I, okay so uh, excel ms access sharepoint and sql so a data analyst should be skilled in all this uh, uh, software so okay the sharepoint really uh, it will in a distributed manner the data is stored in the cloud and all okay so that time uh, if you are going to look insight into the business raw data and uh, uh, derive the decision out of it for that the sharepoint can be used as the name says okay the data is shared and stored across different um, zones and in different nodes it is distributedly managed okay so the data analyst should know about the data mining techniques and how to design a data model what is the input uh, what is the uh, uh, black box is going to decide design for the analytical purpose and what is the prediction is going to generate you should be clear with that so there are different data models uh, techniques are available so he has to select um, uh uh every one and then like whatever he want to do accordingly if, uh, according to the application he has to select it okay so for example uh, neighbors method no people prefer that in the prototype level okay when you want to um give okay uh, actually you want to work with some of the predictive uh, methodologies like very uh, complex complex ended uh, uh, predictive models if you want to use but initially if you want to give okay this is a model we have developed like that it will work in this way okay if you want to show to the business people in one hour if you want to design and show or in 10 minutes if you if you are very good in uh, uh, uh programming in uh, in minutes if you you have to just show that this is the way how will it work the nay base kind of uh, uh models you can use okay those techniques you can use for uh, predicting and showing your prototype to the people so you should not tell that okay tomorrow we'll come and show so always uh, go with the team even if you want some of you may be uh, like entrepreneur like like uh, in a part time you may be doing that okay so uh, in such cases if you want to give a proto it will be better like very in you should be quick enough to show your prototype to the uh, client or customer or the business people so that will impress them instead of taking one day or one week we should be quick enough to serve the uh, customers then the next one is machine learning engineer 
okay so i just want to hear from anyone like what's the difference between uh, ml and ai ml uh, is it a subset or ai is a subset ml is a subset of ai ma'am yes so uh, what is ai and what is ml yes ml is subset so for the known input and output uh, the, the machine is trained in ml machine will create a program is developed or machine is trained <coughs> yes okay so in simple way if you want to know um like uh, i think most of you are from cs only i guess uh, uh can i uh, get to know from the organizers if they tell that whether all are from cs okay no, no, from, we are also from electrical electronics also oh good 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 so in future in that way only will be working sir <laughs> like in a multi uh, multi disciplinary level only we'll be working okay. together yeah in future uh, the future era okay interdisciplinary manner only we'll be working uh, all the research and uh, it will not be like only maths department separate computer science department separate it won't be like that in future i guess okay everything uh, in all the departments will be like mixture of people will be there so then only we can achieve more can train the students really good enough okay so uh ai if you in a, a very simple manner if you want to understand about ai and ml okay ai is like how our intelligence is like we will learn what we we, we will be what we are learning will get up, updated okay we will keep on upgrading ourselves that's in that way only the human is designed okay so in the same way the intelligent they want to design in the system okay so that is ai and we want to train the machine okay so we might have written a code okay if the pattern using the historical data if the pattern is like this okay predict in that way okay so that that will that will happen but if any new input comes the machine should learn it and it should upgrade its data set okay and based on that it should predict it. so that is machine learning okay so we should make as a name says we should make the machine to learn okay not only with the what we have coded in the past it should understand only that and uh, it should predict it's not there but it has to upgrade keep on like what are the new inputs okay new inputs if you are giving for that also it can able to uh, predict and give the uh, results okay so for the machine learning engineer what are the skills needed deep learning python big data analytics and um, tableau uh click kind of uh, data visualization tools they have to know so uh, which are the companies who are recruiting the machine learning engineers apple accenture and jp morgan kind of companies are recruiting machine learning engineers okay so next is data journalist it's really uh, uh very interesting one so the people who have done degree in uh, journalism right they have to update themselves with the data analyst uh, data analytics related um, certifications okay so if they know that they can shine forth okay so what are different news um, or there in the net okay so they have to compile it and they have come to a conclusion okay uh, this is what actually happening so sometimes false news also will be there uh, correct news also will be there in future this is what going to happen even for the um, uh, russia and ukraine uh, uh, war also like many were telling okay the, the war will not happen okay even some of our indian students were there like thinking that it won't happen only it's a threat okay but many many of the journalists they have really predicted well okay so they should uh, get uh, the skills like sql python and other tableau kind of uh, tools also they have to know okay so the next one is uh, database admin so the database admin uh, uh, he will be the uh, monitor monitoring person for uh, observing how the things are happening okay in the uh, database environment 
okay so here the structured and the related database uh, operations can be done through the sql and if there are no uh, relational database okay so we maybe sometimes we work with structural data sometimes unstructured data means uh, no sql will work okay even for the multi dimensional uh, uh, database maintenance also no sql will be helpful okay and parallelly if you want to uh, perform the querying and to speed up the operations for that also uh, the database admin have to find out how in a efficient and effective manner to reduce the time and speed up the process for querying and retrieving the results so for that and all the database admin should have the skill over sql and no sql and if there are any failures happens okay in a distributed manner if the database is maintained then how to retrieve those instances and recover the database okay so that skill also should be known to the database admin the next one is financial analyst as the name says the uh, uh, first thing is he should be knowing about the finance uh, related things so for that he has to do the degree in the uh, mba finance um, or uh, the person may be having the degree in economics or accounts okay then along with that he has to upgrade himself with the data analytics uh, certification courses okay so on an average minimum okay they are uh, they will be paid with per hour if they give some consultancy to some other people right for the companies uh, $40 per hour they can get it okay this is like a minimal average okay and the uh, next one is uh, even uh, we uh, you might have uh, heard from um, iam and all no they have uh, because uh, they provide the consultancy to the uh, companies and the government organization they get funds more okay so i hope uh, even uh, if we get upgraded ourselves uh, engineering colleges also okay we can provide the consultancy more and more uh, to the people in need okay only thing we have to upgrade ourselves uh, in a particular area whether you want to do in business related or uh, if you want to do in the finance related okay if you want to still some of you may be very good in financial management so we can do some of the certification courses related to the finance okay if you are already good in data analyst okay so for the business analyst will uh, help in um, deciding the strategies what is needed to be done uh, how to promote the business to the next level okay if the uh, for example uh, if a government company is uh, uh, there okay if, what are the other uh, side businesses a branch businesses they can do out of it so the business analyst in the company should provide the strategies to move the business to the next level okay so you might have observed like i feel uh, the reliance you know they have really a good business analyst they are like spreading out you can observe in the petroleum selling also they are spreading out in the um, um, like reliance trend you might have observed okay then they have the reliance fresh also okay so like that the business analyst uh, team is very good with the uh, reliance okay that's what we can make out so people uh, later on uh, if you if you want to like uh, as a part time or even we can cultivate to our students that these are all the opportunities okay so the reliance kind of companies really they will observe them okay so they have to know that okay there will not be any um, uh, scarcity later like uh, who will observe us like if you uh, do data analytics related courses who will observe that question should not be there okay we should give them the insight into that like these uh, companies see how they are uh, spreading across how they are branching out from one source to so many okay so uh, there and all they will observe so next is product analyst so, so the usually uh, any new products already one company may be there uh, the product what they are selling it may be like already in peak and the popularity level may be more okay so now with that brand some sample okay the product analyst will tell that okay with that some sample will attach so that will promote our uh, uh a product okay in future so like that uh, the product analyst will give the new ideas to uh, come up with the uh, new selling of the new samples and all 
okay so they you should know that all these people should know about the data analytical tools also the languages and tools also they should be aware of it and they should their communication skill also should be good and they should know how to convince people <coughs> so the next one is uh, business intelligence analyst so uh, these people uh, they will be uh, create they will be using the visualization tools okay and they will create the report for the data what they have and that they will uh, tell that okay derive this they will give the insight they will make the business people to understand uh, these are all the data and uh, these are all the de uh, derived result uh, we are getting out of that okay so that we can uh, that the business intelligence analyst uh, should be doing for any um, company and the next one is marketing analyst so uh, generally if you observe the marketing uh, uh, analyst uh, they will be using the regression analysis more and more okay for example if you consider a, a company sales company okay so how much uh, they can um, allot the budget for a uh, uh, particular uh, media promotion okay so for the social media promotion this much amount for the uh, facebook uh, whatsapp and all they are uh, creating some videos and uh, videos or animation and uh, promoting through the social media okay this much budget for that and then for tv promotion this much budget and for uh, uh, fm radio promotion this much then for newspaper promotion this much like that okay so sometimes if you you might have observed right um, um any any uh, uh, villas and all like suddenly they will not put okay this villa is that also they do but uh, to attract um, the people what they can do okay um, the couple will be standing there question mark okay what we are going to do like that will be the next day continuation of it like directly it's like a communication to us even i was like attracted uh, uh, towards one of the thing like uh, like this only and i have to chase own 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 uh, apartment okay like it will be like a continuation like only one word or uh, one sentence they'll put and they will be the couples will be chatting okay the married couple will they'll be chatting about it what is okay what will happen tomorrow it will be continuation of it so finally like after one month they will tell what exactly they want to sell okay that in that way the marketing analyst can tell that how to really tempt the people okay how to attract the customers okay so for that strategies and all will be provided by the marketing analyst and uh, um, on an average they uh, get paid for their consultancy or uh, dollar 30 dollar per hour okay and these people really they should have the uh, compared to all the other analysts these people should have the uh, very good uh, communication skill otherwise they cannot able to convince the what is okay because a new strategy they will be giving to the business uh, minds right the business owners okay so that time they should uh, they should really convince them okay we will do this okay that may be totally new right nobody will understand it so how they are going to explain and convince the uh, business uh, people and business organizations like it's really a tough job for them but still they have to do that so the next one is uh, quantitative analyst so uh, in future uh, like you even if you google it you'll come to know uh, tomorrow which uh, a stock prediction will be like which stock will be like trading more if you want to know that the predicted uh, prediction model is already used so using that they will tell so if you are very much interested in it you can uh, uh, really uh, uh, invest your money into it okay so the data visualization specialist so which kind of graph for which uh, application we can use it okay so the same uh, like if you are very much liking bar graph for everything we should not use it the same for every um, visualization reports okay so according to the data and according to the um, a projection of our insight into the data according to that which will give really good insight into the data okay so uh, like according to that we have to use a particular visualization charts and we have to uh, proceed with our report so for that we can use um, uh, along with the tableau click and data mirror uh, um, sap and tibco also we can these 
um, uh, these platforms also we can use for visualization and functional analyst uh, he will be knowing actually the data analytical systems okay so how they are really incorporated with one another who are all involved in it and in one part of the system if there is a failure how to overcome that okay uh, so without uh, affecting the remaining so if you the functional analyst should be good in so many areas he has to know about network and all the um, cloud, which are all the storage facility involved in it who are all the uh, data modelers and who are all the data analysts about everybody he should be knowing what are the uh, weak points in the system in the network okay what are the loopholes everything he'll be knowing if there is a failure occurring if there are something goes wrong the storage one storage goes wrong how to retrieve it from other uh, replicas okay so that also he'll be knowing and the next one is uh, data system uh, developer so he will be like a team lead okay he will be knowing okay so this is what we want to do okay so these are all the uh, functional analyst and these are all the uh, journalist analyst okay so like that he will be uh, security analyst is this person so he will be incorporating everybody in into their role and building the data analyst team completely okay so that person will be the data system developer so and uh, still now any doubt is there If there are any doubts, I'm here to take up the question or I can continue. Hello, ma'am. Yes. I, I request any of the participants to ask any of the query. I think uh, Dr. Kripa Rasani, I think one of them I can see here. They ask some question. No, we will continue, ma'am. There are, I think, okay. there are no questions. Okay. Okay. Okay, madam. So, uh, yeah, thank you, ma'am. So, uh, data analytics carrier opportunities around the world. Okay. So, these people, um, if you want to become data analytical uh, expert, first you should know where you are, which domain you are really interested in. Choose a domain properly. Okay, and you have to be thorough with uh, all the techniques involved in uh, data analytics. Okay, each and everything you should know. And what data you are really going to work with. You have to be thorough with that. And some of the programming languages like Python, R and all you should know. And uh, DBMS <coughs> also you have to know. SQL, no SQL also you should know. And visualization tools also you have to know. Okay. So uh, really, the salary for the data analyst is uh, really uh, huge. OK, so no doubt about it. So all the organizations, companies, and industries, they are ready to observe uh, the people who are really um, a good ana data analyst. OK, so we can train and we can motivate our students to uh, do some of the additional um, certification courses in data analyst. OK. Uh, so that will really help the uh, help them to uh, uh, acquaint themselves with the advanced uh, uh, certification courses related to this uh, data analyst or whatever the other areas we have seen. Like if they are re really interested in journalism and all, but they have done engineering degree means they can do additional courses related to degree courses or certification courses, and they can do that. Okay, uh, so that will really. Um, help them to shine forth in their future okay so uh, you should have observed uh, when you were entering into the uh, malls and all you might have observed uh, some of the oh, one time when you have gone uh, uh, some of the items will be kept uh, in the uh, right side and the next time when you go they are moved to the full opposite direction and the uh, items which are kept next to each other next time they'll be fully like shifted to some other place so for this process and all like all of you know that uh, association role mining kind of uh, data analysis techniques will be used okay so that will uh, really uh, even if you want to uh, the if you want to promote a new uh, 
product what can be done like the product which used to be uh, sold okay uh, very very in a very high uh, count so with that the new product can be kept together with that okay which we want to promote which a product which is popular already with that the new product can be kept that's why the samples and all they will attach and give right with the product that's one of the strategy so the business analyst will give give that idea to the people okay even uh, insurance companies if you observe right so they can do some of the um, uh, data analysis task like uh, they'll see like in the past okay so this insurance company if a company uh, is a new insurance company okay so what they will do they will take our uh, data okay by pay, paying some of the com other companies like other banks or other sectors phone uh, tele companies they will pay them and they will take our uh, private data our personal data they'll take okay and there they'll see what are the other insurances already we have taken <clears throat> okay and uh, what are the other uh, like somebody asked some question okay let me see what skills make you qualify to be our next marketing analyst uh, maybe the like uh, for promoting your uh, college <laughs> details okay uh, if you give some of the um really like how we have performed uh, in past okay how many students we have uh, uh, placed already so all these details if you give me i can analyze and uh, i will tell you what are the strategies you can do okay so in the social media you can uh, uh, promote uh, about your college more okay even in the uh, i have uh, attended one of the talk yesterday even the in the linkedin also for your college you can uh, create a profile and put forth okay and um, whoever visit your website college web website okay so for them uh, you can give additional recommendation okay so uh, what they like you can uh, put forth some chat bot okay to interact with them okay so i hope uh, i'm uh, qualified to be your marketing analyst i can give you more ideas because uh, some of the strategies uh, what we follow for uh, making the people attend uh, uh, for example attend the webinars what we conduct and our under our ieee um, uh, women in engineering or ieee uh, computer society right so based on that some of the inputs i can give you for uh, promoting your college i guess okay hope i answered it yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma yes okay so actually i thought of sharing two stories here I, it's there in the slide okay let me move on to that okay so on occasion of um, international women's day like okay so some of you can go through some of the uh, online certification courses from the <clears throat> from swayam nptel okay see here uh, iit people are providing those courses they are offering the courses big data analytics business analytics data mining modeling okay and data analytics with the python programming language marketing analytics modeling and analytics with the supply chain management these kind of courses you can attend okay and uh, course uh, they also offer some of the courses on business analytics advanced business analytics and process management then data analysis then a strategic business analytics so this kind of uh, online courses you can attend okay so that will help us to become uh, uh, qualified for any uh, future dreams what we want to achieve really okay so even the industry 4.0 also if you look into uh, now industry uh, 1.0 if you see in that time only water power and steam power they have used but in industry 2.0 oh, all the electronic gadgets came into place and industry 3.0 if you see using the electronic gadgets in introduced industry 2.0 okay so that using that automation happened there 
and now industry 4.0 if you see full digital digitization only happening along with the data analytical techniques okay so uh, these are some of the entrepreneurs so if you see here i was telling you right tableau tableau uh, it's like the entrepreneur who has created the tableau tool is christian chatbot and his team which help uh, data visualization and click uh, <coughs> uh, it was from lars bijok uh, and horton works it's from uh, arun murthy okay and uh, opera solution from adnab gupta and coursera it's from andrew ng okay and udacity it's from sebastian throne okay and edureka it's from lovelyn batia and gaggle it's from anthony goldblum okay so these are some of the uh, data analytical uh, entrepreneurs okay so now let's look into this uh, story of suchi ramesh she is a successful woman entrepreneur who has used the data analytical uh, knowledge what she had for uh, shining forth in her career okay so if you observe her story uh, her uh, <clears throat> grand dad no he was into motor bike company but this uh, suchi ramesh she shined forth in the uh, government field okay so she has designed a complete uh, supply chain management uh, tools for managing the custom garments okay from the fabrication stage till um, shipping stage and delivery stage okay till that uh, how to manage for that uh, the supply chain management uh, uh, erp solution completely uh, her company has provided uh, so you can look into the suchi.com okay if you want to see that okay so uh, she is very uh, she has a fundamental knowledge of data analytics which help her to quantify the things and achieve uh, really great in her uh, entrepreneurship okay so so with that i'll wind up uh, today's talk if you have any doubts you can ask me <clears throat> yes ma'am any doubts are there yeah yeah i'll assure them any yes. of the participants please uh, you can post the queries or orally audio you can ask the questions <laughs> participants i request any of the participants to unmute and ask any doubts if you have any of the questions so i want to know whether you are going to take me as your marketing analyst or not no <laughs> no. no no nothing like that ma'am okay like that. i was just waiting okay. for the participants to post the queries or uh, okay ma'am i think one of them i think you answered ma'am what are the base skills make you qualified to be our next marketing analyst yes yes yeah that is one query asked yeah, by one experience. of the experience Uh, like uh, the success stories of few people uh, if you observe no data analyst and uh, in entrepreneur along with that entrepreneurship if they want to shine forth if you observe there no uh, you can see always no even the young chaps if you if they become entrepreneur using their data analytical skills they will keep the experience hands with them okay. and they'll keep the expert in their team so if i become marketing analyst for anybody like uh, i cannot do it alone i need a team okay in that team we should have the experts along with us and experienced hands also yes ma'am mm. sir so, uh, ma'am uh, can you just uh, throw light on the employment opportunities in this particular field ma'am yeah i told one of the example is like uh, reliance you 
like yes. there is uh, so much opportunity there in reliance and uh, even in the healthcare sectors also okay hospitals also they recruit people to perform the analytical data okay because whatever the um, if there are cancer patients there okay so for performing the diagnosis uh, automatically uh, to conform with the doctor's uh, diagnostic results okay so even if you want to get placed in some of the hospitals to provide your data analytical solutions there you can approach them and you you have to give like a prototype okay how will you be really supporting their job yes madam one more question ma'am one more question what yeah. are your thoughts on changing the field of graduates to join the industry as analyst is it necessary does one need to worry about it no they have so much opportunities uh, there only thing they have to get accredited to some of the uh, data analytical courses okay few certification courses really will uh, enhance their knowledge because already like uh, if they finish their degree okay any engineering co- uh, course if they finish really they are ready so along with that few data analytical related uh, certification courses if they do they will really they can do better in their placements and companies will observe them yes ma'am yeah ma'am thank you so much ma'am for yes. accepting our invitation and delivering such a nice presentation i think all of our participants have gained the information whatever you have shared with us ma'am thank you so much ma'am yes ma'am ma'am i think one more question ma'am can we relate blockchain and data analytics yes 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 yes, yes ma'am so yeah. here uh blockchain if you look into the attackers no attackers will try to use the data analytical skills for cracking the blockchains and they may stole our uh, digital assets there is a so uh, we know that hackers are equivalently they are like uh, they have very good uh, analytical skills than the developers okay they uh find out the loop holes which are there in the <laughs> blockchain so if they want to generate the um, duplicate uh, blocks to imitate the actual transaction they will add the blocks to the uh, actual networking blockchain networking and they may create the conflict okay uh, what happens here sometimes when we shut down uh, the blockchain uh, digital asset transaction with, with respect to a uh, single digital asset transaction some of the nodes will be active right because of that what happens the attackers may try to gain the accessibility over them and they will try to they will become the vulnerable one for the remaining assets okay so here uh, the data using data analytical skills only the hackers will try to cause damage to the digital assets okay and the transaction happening through the blockchain and to overcome that also again we'll be using data analytic power only to identify in which end the flooding of the long blockchains are happening they have to be removed and uh, from which point the attackers are accessing it okay so for that also the data analytical skills only will help us to protect the blockchain transaction uh, of the digital assets okay blockchains are secured but sometimes uh, blockchains are secured but still uh, some of the blockchains are uh, attacked by the intruders but it's very easy to get back the digital asset which you have lost okay that provision is available only with the blockchain but if you have used only simple cryptography algorithms and if you have transferred some of the packets and it's it got uh, uh, hack by somebody okay we will not get back the digital asset but when we use blockchain the previous owners details will be there okay so the new one who has attacked the uh, or stolen the digital asset he cannot corrupt the previous uh, blocks okay so that provision getting back the stolen asset is possible in the blockchain thank you sir
हेलो हेलो यस मैम यस एम आई ऑडिबल मैम थैंक यू सो मच मैम थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सो नाउ वी हैव कम एंड एंड ऑफ द सेशन टू सो आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू फिल द अटेंडेंस फॉर्म ऑफ सेशन वन एंड सेशन टू ऑफ डे टू एंड बी शार्प ऑनलाइन एट टू फोर्टी फाइव The talk is by Professor Shaktivel Sir on the topic role of engineering institutes in inculcating the skill set for neuromorphic computing. I request all the participants to be online sharp at two forty five again. Thank you. Okay, madam. Thank you so much for the talk. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. हेलो मैडम हेलो मैडम ऑन रिक्वेस्ट यस सर कैन यू शेयर द पीपीटी सो फॉर द सेशंस ऑन आवर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप सो दैट वी कैन रेफर इट अगेन एंड अगेन व्हेन एवर रिक्वायर्ड सर वी विल कलेक्ट ऑल द वीडियोस एट द एंड ऑफ द एफटीपी बेसिक्स ऑफ द एफडीपी एंड शेयर विद यू सर द लिंक और द मटेरियल एट द एंड ऑफ द एफडीपी वी विल शेयर इट Okay, okay. Madam, one more request. If you can resend that link because I got disconnected and I lost all your messages. If you have already shared the link, can you reshare it, yeah. please? Yeah, we will share it again, madam. Yeah, please. Thank we you. We will share it. Yes, ma'am.